a big one today from Arlington, Texas, as this budding rivalry in the XFL Week 4 and a good game in the West Division between Dallas and Houston. The Texas throwdown is what they're calling it. Two good teams in this XFL ready to go. Hey, let's go today, baby. You know who runs Texas? It's Dallas, baby. Let's go. 7 no, 6 8 time. We own this. We run this city. Let's go. It's been a great week. Yes, sir. Now it's time to finish with a great day. Yes, sir. Ain't no two step. Let's keep our foot on the gas, yo. This is the best in the West. But on this old flag, there can be only one star. There's another opportunity to show that I'm healthy and I'm ready to go. Ready to go. My um, motivation now, man, is really my fam. It's a mentality, it's a mindset. mindset. This is Houston versus Dallas. If you are who you say you are. Welcome to the Texas Throwdown. Just get it done. Right now on FS1. Here they come, the Renegades in Arlington on their home turf. They are 2-1 and one on the year against the 3-0 and oh Roughnecks of Houston. It is the Texas Throwdown, the XFL on FS1. What a gorgeous day for football, and we are glad to have you along today because here's what's on the line in this early season here. The West Standings, Houston at 3-0, and oh, unbeaten on top. The Renegades 2-1, and one, but 2-0 and oh, since Landry Jones, their quarterback, came back from injury, so a lot on the line is just a developing rivalry here today. My my partner, three-time Pro Bowl, all pro, pro Bowl tight end, Greg Olson. Figure, get that one out. I'm Kevin Burkhardt. So when we talk about Houston, Greg, they're undefeated, and, and nothing stands out more than their pass game. P.J. Walker and Cam Phillips have lit up the league. Yeah, P.J. Walker has taken this league by storm. He's obviously the clear front runner right now for league MVP, but not too far on his heels is his teammate and his kind of running mate, Cam Phillips. He's just incredible. This is arguably the best quarterback wide receiver duo in the entire XFL. Their production on a week-by-week -week basis is just incredible. I can't wait to see how these two guys continue this magic today against a very good Dallas defense. Yeah, you're seeing some of the highlights here, and you look at the numbers, and they're just kind of eye-popping what they've been able to do together. Forget about the whole rest of the team. This is just these two together. Walker to Phillips, 20 completions, is tied for the league best, by the way. 324 yards and seven touchdowns. Cam Phillips has more touchdowns than Dallas does as a team. That's a lot. But don't discount Dallas because, as I said, they played much better since Landry Jones came out. Their pass offense is actually first in the X XFL. And it's ironic, though, because it's first, but yet they, they do it through their running backs. Yeah, even offensive coordinator Hal Mummy, he even acknowledges their best two players are Lance Dunbar and Cameron Artis Payne, their two running backs. They get them involved, of course, in the run game, but they're heavily involved in their passing attack. As you said, number one pass offense in the league, led by this Hal Mummy, Landry Jones offense. We got two great powerhouse offenses going up against each other today, and I hope it's a shootout. Yeah, the first in a developing rivalry, by the way. Third member of our team today is Owen. Is Jenny Taft. There's been some chirping this week, Jenny. What's going on? Well, Kevin, I don't know about you, but when I think about Texas, I automatically think about football. This state, it lives and breathes for their favorite sport, and that's why today, between Dallas and Houston, it is so important. You mentioned the name. They're calling it the Texas Throwdown, and don't worry. Both two teams' social media accounts have taken full advantage of this rivalry and living it up. You know who knows it very well? It's Houston head coach June Jones, who also coached at SMU rivalry exists it doesn't matter if it's smu and houston if it's the dallas cowboys and the houston texans this rivalry is real and we're going to see more of it today 1500 roughneck fans expected in attendance about a three and a half hour drive they want to continue to see their team stay undefeated because kevin today bragging rights in texas are on the line uh, you can see it jenny right look at the shots we're showing you these fans are out and it's not that far of a drive three and a half maybe four hours we know this, the temperature is perfect, 73 degrees. It is a little windy down there, 19 mile an hour gusts. And you take a look at the odds here, as Houston is undefeated, they are the favorite. These odds presented by Fox Bet here, over under at 51 and a half. Houston, the top point 
scoring team in the XFL. The home team has a decision to make whether they want to kick or receive. Dallas will kick it off, and here we go. Week four in the XFL from Arlington, and that one will bounce into the end zone on a touchback. In the air by Will was placed at the 35-yard line, first down. And there you go. So that's uh, one of the XFL rules. If it bounces in, put it at the 35. If it goes in on the air, you take it on the 15. Here is P.J. Walker. That's who Greg was talking about in the open. Just turned 25 at a birthday this week. And he put out excellent numbers at Temple, so much so. He's their all-time leader in pass yards and pass touchdowns. And then see what he's done the first three weeks. I mean, just sensational. 748 yards, 10 touchdowns. That leads the league. And here he is. And here is Houston unbeaten to start this off in this run-and-shoot offense. Walker to throw it. Pumps and incomplete. Going far side of the field, and there was Phillips, who we tried to get involved early. Josh Hawkins, the top cover man, was on him. As you look at this Houston lineup, up, I know Greg Tier just made there are no tight ends on June Jones' squad. I'm sorry. Yeah, I wouldn't do so well in this June Jones offense. He doesn't have, like you said, he doesn't have a guy on his roster listed as a tight end. But uh, they do a great job. They got some really, really electric wide receivers, not just Cam Phillips, who we saw targeted there. Their entire offense is is, is really talented. And he's got a lot of weapons. Pressure. Walker sees it, delivers as he gets hit, and has a completion up to the 40-yard line. So it'll be a third down about five. It's Lewis who makes the catch. Keelan Robinson came on with some heavy pressure. This Dallas defense has been very good. As a matter of fact, they're the number one scoring defense so far in the XFL. And we mentioned Josh Hawkins. There's going to be a lot of, if not all the time, Josh Hawkins, who is their top cover cornerback, on Cam Phillips today. It's going to be fun to watch. That's the matchup to watch. He, he, Cam Phillips is not going to be able to go anywhere today without Josh Hawkins right on his hip. They feel that gives them their best chance to shut down Houston's best weapon on offense, and they need some other guys to step up. Third down, going deep down the field. Caught as he inbounds. I think there's a conversation here. And yes, it looks like he's inbounds for the completion. It was coached. Moving on the field, there's a catch inbounds for a first down. You only need one foot in the XFL, Greg. What do you think? I think he got it. I, let's see again here when they show the replay. You can see Houston, they're trying to get up to the line. They're going hurry, hurry, trying to get this ball off. Oh, they didn't get it off. They're calling it. Well, they're going to review it. You gotta be a little faster there, KD. Get lined up. 25 yards ahead. Hustle. Uh, true. Line the line. The ruling on the field of a catch inbounds is under further review. And so they will look at it upstairs. All these plays are reviewed upstairs. There are no coaches challenges. So you need one foot, but you still need control, obviously. Yeah, I think I think when the left foot is on the ground, the ball hits him in the arms. The we, left foot's down. And the ball doesn't seem to move at all. So I would say when the ball hits him in the chest, I, I'm going that it's, it's going to be a catch. Teams Mark Buggerworth is our replay back. official today. Yeah, foot come, it's his, his foot's up and his next foot to come down is out of bounds. So we do have an incomplete pass. No. Yeah, because his other foot is off the ground. I just want to make sure, I want to make sure his foot's off the ground when he catches it. It's up. Yeah, his foot's up. So we're going to go to incomplete pass, and we're running to running anyways, Brandon, so we're not going to do anything with the clock. Perfect. And, and just need the previous spot. Yeah, let's go back to the previous spot. Is the, it's the, it's, is it? Yeah, hold on, hold on, guys, sorry. Wait, where is it? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Fourth and five on the 40. Fourth and five on the minus 40. On the minus 40, and it was on the uh, Houston half. Or, yeah, okay. Houston half. Thanks. Okay. After reviewing the play, the receiver controlled the ball. His next foot came down out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. Ball in the spot. It's fourth down. Well, that's interesting. It's a little different than what we thought. Dean Blandino, head of officiating for the XFL is back in Los Angeles for us. And Dean, here's your take here. Yeah, so what they were looking at when the receiver first got control, like you guys were talking about, was that left foot still on the ground. And obviously, the replay official, Mark Butterworth, had a shot that showed the foot was clearly up. 
when he ended up getting control of the football, and that's why they overturned it. All right, there you go. Taking us through it. Dean, we appreciate that. It's a big call. Instead of a 25-yard gain, it's a fourth down, the punt. And now, here come the Renegades and Landry Jones, who, remember, he, the first practice had a knee injury, Greg, and he missed the first game. So he's still kind of getting back into game shape here. He is, and, and even prior to that, he, he was out of the game. He was back in, in Texas, kind of living a normal life, and Bob Stoops called him out of retirement and said, hey, I want you to lead this this Dallas team. And as each week has gone on, he's continued to get better and better. Look at this. They come out with five wide to start it off, and now they'll move into the backfield. They do this a lot. Hey, push it, push it, push it. Hey, push it, dudes. 47, dudes. <laughs> Cameron Artis Payne, the running back, he gets it right up the middle and a big hole for Artis Payne, who works his way out to the 34. And Artis Payne has had a good year so far. And you look at it, 185 yards Dallas, rushing coming in. Dallas is going it's actually fast. number Dallas. one in the XFL in yards per carry, 6.4. Yeah. He's a guy I saw up close and personal four years. He was a teammate of mine in Carolina, and he just seemed to always be behind a really good player, and he never quite got the reps yeah, he deserved. And every time he played, he produced like he has this year for Dallas. There's a move. Artis Payne shoulder down. Has a first down. So a couple runs at Cameron Artis Payne. And that'll move with the change as Cody Brown came up for the hit. Cody Brown, big hitter on this defense as we look up front. Tony Ely, another one of your former teammates in Carolina on that line. Linebackers, these are the guys that play the most, but they rotate Dallas a lot up over the ball. at that position. And then Brown leads the secondary position. This team gets a lot of turnovers, but they also give us right. a lot of yards. Right. Yeah. Okay. Clock is good. Clock is good. Both running backs in the game right now, and they'll mix it up. It's done there. It's carry first down. Both these running backs play in the same backfield a lot. They did it in the second half last week, and it works. I love the way they, they've kind of built this package. They, they identified that two of their better players, if not their two best, are their two running backs. So let's put them both in the game at the same time. Dunbar can play a little in the slot. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. There you saw him just take a traditional run. Those two running backs, everything goes from there. Yes. Throw, pressure on. Oh, what a catch. I'm telling you, these guys are really, really good players, and they're doing a great job. You see Artis Payne here does a nice job just getting lost, getting lost. They tell the running back, wait for your first offensive lineman to break and get right in behind him. You see him there. Great job in space, really well-timed on the screen. Cameron Artis Payne has great awareness. He's got great feel. He's a natural runner with the ball. Fifth play of the drive. Jones has time firing down the middle, and it's intercepted. Cody Brown. With some blockers. Now to midfield. And Cody Brown, his second interception of the year, and it stops a nice opening drive. And this is what's plagued Dallas all year. They lead in almost every category offensively, but they also lead the league in turnovers. Landry Jones has really struggled the last couple weeks throwing picks. You see Cody Brown, he's right there. They're playing a too high safety. It almost looks to me like Landry Jones expected him to just be a little bit flatter. You see the receiver there, Joshua Crockett, just kind of keep his angle real skinny and high. Cody Brown did a nice job driving on that ball, hit him dead between the two and the five. Those are the plays that Landry Jones has to clean up. Got off to a fast start, first couple plays, and turnovers have plagued them this entire season so far. Yeah, they have, and Houston's been the opposite, right? They came in at plus five in the turnover department. Walker now quickly in the flat, incomplete. Tried to swing it out there to Khalil Lewis in a second and ten. As we talked in the first drive, you know, you're going to see Hawkins 28 cover uh, Cam Phillips throughout the game. They're going to need Lewis, Sammy Coates, Nick Holly, the slot. He can play a little running back, a little bit in the slot, kind of a utility guy. They're going to need some of these other weapons, these other targets for P.J. Walker to step up because Dallas thinks Josh Hawkins is a legit cover corner, and he's going to be lining up against their best player the entire game. Second down. Walker steps away, lofting it deep, going for Lewis, penalty flat. Lewis looked like he was held as that ball was in the air. And Tenny Adewusi was the guy, the safety, who tried to run with him. 
Pass interference, defense, number 20. Ball's placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. I think if he doesn't grab him there, KB, it's probably a touchdown. Lewis is over the top. Yeah, it doesn't look like a ton from there, but in live, in live action, it seemed to me like he really grabbed him, caused Lewis to kind of stumble and lose his stride. Because if not, that's that's probably six. A 28-yard penalty is what it is. Walker on the give. It's Butler. And not much. And, you know, with all these weapons and all the, the downfield running game, Butler's the guy that kind of sneaks up on you. He has. And last week, he didn't have a ton of touches. You know, it's seven carries, but over 10 yards a carry. I mean, this is a guy that when they do mix in the run, June Jones's philosophy, very similar to Hal Mummy on the other sideline, we are going to pass the ball to set up the run. And James Butler is the perfect guy for that role. Doesn't get a ton of touches, but when he does, he really makes the most of them. I expect him today as the game goes on for them to continue to to put him as part of this action here. Second down, four-man rush. Walker incomplete. Nick Holly was the guy closest. Why don't we take a listen into June Jones on the play call? Just throw it there to Lewis as he replaces where that blitzing linebacker. They didn't end up pressuring. He still tried to go to Lewis, but the pressure off the left side just caused the ball to, caused the ball to be off target. So it ruined the play, and so we'll see Sergio Castillo. Three of five on field goals this year. As long as 44. This from 37. And he's got it. And so off the turnover, the big interception by Cody Brown sets up the first score of the game with Houston in front of Dallas, 3 0. Should be a fun rivalry here in the XFL, and there's uh, well, it's it's been throwing down all day today. The Renegades out in full force, and their fans are roughnecks, uh, as Jenny told you earlier in the game. What 1,500 of them traveling up? It's actually a cool thing they did as part of a season ticket package. You get one game in the opposite stadium in Texas, kind of promote the rivalry. So this one started off with a turnover, an interception by Cody Brown. The roughnecks turned into a field goal. Here's Austin Walter on the kick return out to the 30. And we'll get a second look at Landry Jones. They had a nice drive on the opener there, Greg, before the interception. And it's really not only the interception, but they, they have just been slow at the gate. Yeah, there's something about the way they start out these games. They're so strong in the second half. They really light it up. But for some reason, opening drives, first quarter or two, they just come out really sluggish. Let's take this second drive here, continue to use my backs, continue to use the strength of this team. And let's try to get some more completions and try to get Landry Jones settled back in following the turnover. Easy, 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 easy. Bobcat, Bobcat. Bobcat Yoda, Bobcat Yoda. Bobcat Yoda. Double duel, double duel. Double duel. Double duel. I'm saying double duel. It's typically a protection. Yep. Jones against the blitz. Gets it out to Artis Payne. Makes a catch and a nice positive game. He's got six yards on first down. There is zone. Hal Mummy. Or take what you like if they're going to blitz us. Watermelon. He gets in that play call Watermelon. quick. Watermelon. He's got the smallest call sheet maybe in pro football. Look at the size of that. It's like an index card. That's a, that's a leaflet. Gosh. How do you have everything on there? You must have great eyes. Small font. Artis Payne on the run. Another carry. Another surge forward. Another first down. Well, he's off to a good start. Artis Payne finding some seams. And he 
you know, you said in the open, this is a guy you played with. Give me a little more. What, what was he like as a teammate? I really like Cap. That, that's kind of what everyone called him, Cameron Artis Payne. I really thought he was one of those guys, he's a pure runner. He's going to be in the backfield, not going to do a ton in the pass game, out in the slot. But when you hand him the ball, he's got great vision. He's got a great field. A player like that, they didn't really block it great, but he still picks up four or five yards. He very rarely loses yardage. He's just a very instinctual, very sound runner. Give it to him again. Why not? Nice stutter cut and then darts up field. Oh, pot. look at that. Just what you're talking about. Six yards. That didn't look like much. Yeah, again, that, those kind of runs are really what we saw up close and personal. But, you know, he was behind guys like McCaffrey and guys like Jonathan Stewart where, you know, it was just hard to take reps away from those guys. And he kind of got stuck in just a really talented group of running back rooms, but this is a great opportunity to him to see, him to show people that, hey, I can play, and I'm, I'm a guy that you can give the ball to, and I can really do some things. Eight plays so far for Dallas. Six of those touches going to Artis Payne here. Jones to throw, has time over the middle, knocked away nicely. That was DeMarcus Gates who came over the top, and a third down. Clip 95 is the open. Landry, we got two downs here. Four down, four down. Four down. Don't have two downs. Hey, hold, hold. Hey, four seconds coming. So he originally told him we got two downs, and then he One called game. it off, so it almost One seems day. like they wouldn't go for it here on fourth down. Ready, go ahead. When the original message is that they would. Yeah, interesting. Here he loads up and fires it. He's got a completion to Flynn Nagel, who's done a great job over the middle of the field for this team. Down to the 39 for Nagel. It's a hookup of 15. Yeah, it didn't end up mattering. You see Flynn Nagel here off the left side of the screen. He just comes and finds that soft part of the middle. Two high safeties up top. There's just nobody here in the middle of the field. Just slows down. Great job by Landry Jones protecting him by throwing the ball behind him to prevent the big hit. It's a good third down pick up there by Landry to just kind of get settled in here again. So on first down, blitz coming. Quick throw. And it's intercepted again. Dietrich Nichols has it. And another big return. The sixth interception of the year already by Landry Jones and two in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, you sound like a broken record. We, we kind of talked about it leading up all week to the game, and now it's kind of reared its head. It's just an RPO. He pulls the ball. Not sure if it was the right read. It seemed like Ferguson was pretty well covered, but a ball that gets deflected in the middle of the field nine times out of ten becomes a pick. Those are just off-target throws, decision-making, some bad breaks, all those things combined. Just turnovers have really in the story of this season so far through the first four weeks with Dallas Renegades offense. And certainly of this game, uh, you see the sixth interception. Remember, he didn't play the first game. So here is Houston in great field position. P.J. Walker is only one of his first six. Pressure coming, throws it around. Holly back shoulder. What a grab. He's inside the 30. A beauty to Nick Holly turned around to make the catch. He's got 23 yards. This is one of those kids you just can't help but cheer for. His story coming out of Kent State, kind of a running back, wide receiver, kind of jack of all trades. Look at that back shoulder. Watch him track this ball. Back shoulder, puts it in a great location. This kid can do it all. Great story, has overcome a ton of injury and a ton of obstacles to continue his playing career. You just can't help but root for a kid like a guy like Ollie. What a great play. On first down, give to Butler, gets to the edge, cuts up the field inside the 25. Let's go down the sidelines with Jenny Taft. I mean, not a bad sight for this group. I want to start with Cody. He had that first interception and Dietrich as well. So take me through what you saw on the first one and just how good it feels to get that start. Uh, it feels good to get that start, you know, actually, especially when our offense come out like that. But I think we're going to pick it up. So, I mean, we see some things on film. So, I mean, that's the only thing I do. I just watch film and I just put it on the game. Dietrich, how about you? What from the film specifically stood out how you guys can take advantage of this offense? Uh, just like he said, watch your film since Sunday and just um, letting the players come to us. Cody, I know for you, you're a Houston guy, so this showdown, it matters a lot. You're working as a substitute teacher at one point, so be back playing. How has it been for you to be a part of this? Uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know, uh, just, to, you know, going from not knowing what you're going to do to, you know, back playing football, you know, the game I love that I always prepare for all my life. Good start for you guys. Thank you. Jenny, thank you. Appreciate the guys in the moment there with that interview. And I love what Jenny said about, you know, Cody was a substitute teacher. He grew up 
I guess about an hour outside of, of Houston. But how cool! Imagine one of those kids. Hey, wait a second. He he was my teacher, and now he's make, he's intercepting balls. It's so cool. These stories, this league, what the opportunities it's given these guys is is just so unique and special. Walker to Holly. So interesting, Greg. You talked a lot about Phillips in the matchup with Hawkins on him, and really PJ hasn't really looked to that matchup yet. Yeah, early on we said you know, they, they Houston understands they're going to need some other guys to step up. We've seen him target a few times. Lewis, we've now seen two completions to Holly. Hit, oh, just missed the ball out of bounds to Coates early in the first possession. They need some of these other guys to, to really step up because, like we said, Hawkins is a good player, and they know when he needs it, he's going to number 14. The give. And Butler is stacked up. Well played by the Renegades that time. Uh, Greer Martini was on the stop. Let's listen to June Jones on third down. Trips left up, 861, divide, Z fade. Trips left, 861, divide, Z fade. We got the uh, dog picked up to your right right here. So he's letting them know if they blitz to the right, you're protected, but you're not on the left. So if he gets pressure off this side here, he's got to protect himself. They drop out. So it's just great communication between June Jones and his quarterback. He really gives him a clear picture pre-snap so that way when the ball is live, he can just react. This ball gets away from him a little bit and kind of sails it. But I just love the idea that we can hear what the quarterback coach, what the coordinator, the play caller is able to relay into his player and really paint this really unique picture for the viewer that we can then see whether it plays out or not when the ball is snapped. Really quite the introspective look. Be a 30-yard field goal attempt for Castillo. He hit from 37 a little while ago. Trying to go two for two, and he does just that. And so, the Roughnecks get a couple interceptions. They convert both into field goals. They've got the early 6 to nothing lead. Nothing Houston in front of Dallas down the sidelines. We go with Jenny. She's got Bob Stoops. Kevin, thanks. Well, I know Landry is going to want to move past those mistakes, Coach. But in terms of this offense, what do you need to see differently to clean it up? Yeah, you know, as much as anything, it's the turnovers. We've moved the ball every time we've had it. We get across the 50. We've had two interceptions. The second one, our receiver's got to catch the ball. It's right in his hands. Thank you for your time. All right. Uh, no doubt, Bob, thanks, Jenny, thanks. Meanwhile, we noticed, Greg, that uh, you pointed it out, Philip Nelson, the backup quarterback, starting to throw. He is. He's having a catch here at the, on the sideline. It still looks to me like Landry Jones is in the offensive kind of group awaiting the possession to start. So I don't know if this is just part of Nelson's routine to just stay loose, but... Obviously, Landry Jones yeah. coming on the Something field. Something to keep an eye on, though. Let's go all access with Bob Suits on that last interception. No. Oh, my gosh. Well, I don't know why he's throwing it. The guy's all over him. Uh, there you go. So it kind of put blame on both parties there on the decision and on Jazz Ferguson. Not hauling in on the RPO. Goes nowhere. Houston all over him. Yeah, I think in his interview with Jenny, I think he was trying to support his quarterback. I think in real time, you saw his kind of natural reaction, which was kind of the reaction we all had. He wasn't watermelon, open. Watermelon. Hand the ball off, live the play, watermelon. another snap. Um, but I give him a lot of credit. Landry's his guy. He's going to go to bat for him. His receiver could have put his hands up and tried to catch a tough contested ball, but he knows that's a ball he can't throw. Right? On the give, Artis Payne right up the gut, works his way to the 40. Quick pickup of five, and here comes third down. Let's go, let's go. So Artis Payne has had a nice start to this game. They've gone to him a lot. That doesn't have been the problem. Six carries, 26 yards. Third down and five. Hey, see. Go on, go on. One day. Pretty good. Give it to him again. A little stutter to the outside. Artis Payne making it happen, but hang on. Penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, typically when a running back starts inside and then bounces it, one of those linemen on the outside can't help but 
grab a jersey. We'll see what they call. Holding. Offense number 65. 10-yard penalty. It's third down. It's on Alex Balducci, the right guard. Yeah. Some, you know, you see, this is like an inside zone here. You see him here, right guard. You see, they hand the ball off, and Artis Payne kind of starts Linda, right Linda. at him. Linda, Linda. And when he runs away, just loses Linda. leverage, and he just tackles the guy. Sometimes linemen expect a running back to hit it in a certain area, and then the defense reacts to the new path of the back. Monday. And they end up just grabbing him. And Ready, go ahead. You saw there, pull him to the ground. Third and 15, Roughnecks run a stun. Joe. Intercepted again. It's Nichols for the second time today. Landry Drones has three interceptions in the first quarter. Oh, man. You, you feel for him now. Uh, you know, he came in. We, when, we, when we talked to him, he, he understood it. He knew this was something he needed to address. He thought it was something that would just work its way out. You see him here. Nichols is playing in the slot. And he just comes right underneath that curl route. Landry Jones just doesn't even see him. It's just the zone. They're taking deep drops. Just drop that ball off underneath. Let your runner just let the receiver run with the ball after the catch. You see him the moment it left his hand. He knew that's just the ball you can't throw into that coverage. This has been a this has been a tough start here for Landry Jones. And a lot on this Dallas defense early. I mean, it's only six nothing. It could be way worse right now. But here, look at this field position. They've stood oh, twice. Can they oh. do it a third time? Walker. And over the middle, he's got there's the first one to Phillips, who's got nine yards on the catch. He's had back hey, to back to three touchdown weeks, and there is Nichols. Two interceptions today, three on the year. This defense has come to play today. I can see the guys. They're having a lot of fun, as they should be. You have three picks in the first quarter. Tell everybody that'll listen. Enjoy it, man. Those days are hard to come by. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter. Fake to Williams and a quick hitter over the middle. Good for a first down as Holly's got another grab. See P.J. Walker there telling his guys, hurry up, hurry up, get lined up. He obviously saw something there with the RPO, pulled it. Holly there in space to pick up a very simple first down. Hey, let's get rolling, man. Let's go. Walker kind of said in a little bit different language than us. They've had three turnovers. The first two, they've kind of stubbed their toe a little bit, settled for field goals. Yeah. Everything going Houston's way. It's only 6 nothing though, after one. Back here in Arlington, the numbers in the first quarter were they're ugly if you're a Dallas fan. Houston, three interceptions of Landry Jones. They've turned that into six points, and... You know, Greg, it certainly could be a whole heck of a lot worse if not for the Dallas defense making a couple stands. Yeah, at the end of the quarter, we, we kind of touched on it quick. We said, you know, there's been three turnovers. The first two, Dallas defense has really stood out. You know, they've really stood strong, held them to two field goals. You know, if they can do it a third time here, you talk, you're, the sideline would come to life. If you talk about your defense just having your back and bailing your offense out, if this game is 9 nothing max after the first three turnovers, I think Dallas is thrilled. On first down, blitz coming knocked away. So Dallas sent the blitz that time, and Gerald Rivers got his hands on it. Done a good job getting pressure on Walker so far. He's only 5 of 12 for 51 yards. Just in the slot, he just runs a simple flat route. The outside two receivers just run little slants. Causes just enough rub there to 58. 
Asante Brown just can't get through the outside receivers and cover his flat assignment. Hey, yeah, it's an he easy he pitch and catch. Ready. Great run after catch. Lewis is one of those guys we touched earlier in the broadcast. Is someone hey, they got to get. They got to get him rolling, take some pressure off Dan Phillips. On first and goal, Walker throws. It is caught for the touchdown. Nick Ali. You hear him say this guy is dangerous. He's in this three man bunch here. He just crosses face. I mean, he doesn't do anything spectacular there. He really just crosses Don Donatello Brown's face. Great ball. Goes down and secures it. This guy can play running back. This guy played quarterback in college. Now he's playing kind of a hybrid wide receiver. June Jones said when we got him, when we drafted him, we just kind of thought he was a running back and we'd figure it out. And then we got him. We said, this guy runs great routes. He's more of a slot receiver. And now we've seen here through the first quarter and change, he's really being used. In that capacity for this offense. Roughnecks going for three here. Walker going to take off. Is he going to get there? Yes, he is. What a move for three points for the Roughnecks. Wow. I didn't think there was any way he was getting there when he initially took off. If you're Chris Woods, this Renegades defensive coordinator, I'm not sure what else you can do. You got a great coverage on. Everybody's covered. You just don't account for the best athlete on the field being the quarterback. I mean, they got everyone. You see it here from his vantage point. They kind of just drop out. They only rush three. They got eight guys in coverage. And he's got it. I mean, he's just the best athlete on the field. You see T. Gray Scales has a chance to tackle him, but he really has no chance. This guy's electric with the ball in his hands. Run, pass. This guy's pretty unique. It's like Iverson, one-on-one, -on -one, crossover. See got you no, later. No shot. Down to the field, back to Jenny. Your defense got things going for you guys, but hey, how about that for the offense? Finding Nick, and then you get the three yeah. points there. So just take me through everything in that play, how it developed for you. Uh, which one? You know, Nick? Yeah, both. Uh, we just, uh, we, we game plan for, start a zone, you know, Nick did a great job running that route. O'Lan did a great job protecting. You got to fit it in the window. And then your second three-point conversion there, I mean, those feel extra special. Yeah, they, 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 they do. <laughs> you don't get an opportunity to get three points on offense like that besides the field goal, you know, so it just feels good. Continue to do your thing, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, PJ. Very cool to do that right after that electrifying run, and everything has gone right for Houston so far, except for maybe this. Wow! The kick goes out of bounds, so Dallas will take it on the 45 going in. That happened in the game yesterday, too. We really haven't seen it happen too much in the XFL, but that's a huge change of pace. And so finally, Dallas can take advantage of a Houston mistake because the Renegades have made plenty. Three interceptions. Second one off Jazz Ferguson's hands, and then this one, Greg, you said it just didn't see the defender in the zone. Yeah, he just threw it right into his chest. This was all over it. Andrew Jones, but he, he can't overreact right now. This entire Dallas offense, Arizona. Al Mummy, Landry Jones. It's a 15-point game. You've gotten off to a disastrous start. But it's the second quarter. It's a two-score game. With the way people score points in this league, you're fine. You can't overreact. Try to find your rhythm and get back into your game plan. And look where they Pretty start. Good. That's the penalty in this league for kicking that ball out of bounds. A fake to Dunbar. Get it to Ferguson. It just fell down. You know, it, it, the Renegades, Greg, you, you pointed this out in calls this week. you got to see this tight end on Dallas. And, and I'm just curious. It's hard to miss because he's 6'8", but I haven't seen it go his way yet. Yeah, I think a guy, we've talked a lot about the backs. You see him right here. He's the biggest guy on the field, number 49, Donald Parham. This guy is 6'8", 260 pounds. Last week, they clocked him at 21 miles an hour on his touchdown. I mean, it's... This is just a different type of body type, a different type of guy. Landry Jones talked about, I kind of had to get used to throwing him the ball. He was so long, and he was taking such long strides. But I'll tell you what, the last couple weeks, they've kind of figured it out. He's a special, special talent. They just got to kind of fine-tune him a little bit. Yeah, he's only got the one target today. That was a play where Gates kind of reached over him and, and knocked it away. Meanwhile, Coney Ely is injured for Houston. 
the defensive end being looked at by the training staff. Well, you uh, you are familiar with a lot of guys in this game. A few, few, few of your former teammates with the Panthers, and he is one of them, had one of the great Super Bowls ever. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, we're a, we're a offensive performance a little better than brutal in the Super Bowl from him being the MVP. I hate to see him. We've talked a lot about Cap on the other side getting off to a good start. It's nice to see Coney get back on his feet, kind of walk, look like they were looking at his shoulder or something in his upper body, but looks like he's going to be all right. Really talented player, you know, kind of lost some opportunities here and there, kind of had his struggles, but the guy can play. And yesterday, Ted Cottrell talked about just he's an elite talent. They're just trying to kind of hyper-focus him in the right direction because when he's going, he's going the right way. He can get after the quarterback. He can play the run. He's a he's a top ever caliber player. Dallas on third down. Dunbar gets it. Slithers his way forward, close to a first down. Now the spot. I think he's a half yard short. I'm assuming the way this game has gone, this will be a position to go for it. Yeah, I don't think you have a choice. I think. Laser, laser. I think right now, especially with the touchback rules and everything, I think you, this is a no-brainer. So they will do that. Artist Payne in the backfield, fourth and less than one. I'm giving it to Cameron Artist Payne right here if I'm them. Dunbar comes Dunbar. around on the jet sweep. Dunbar's got a first and more. Lance Dunbar with a big play and a fourth down. And boy, did Dallas need it. Dunbar delivers. So they use Cap. They put both running backs in at the same time. They use Cameron Artist Payne as kind of the decoy there. They go full zone and kind of to the left, which is the path that Cap takes. You see, everyone here is going to go left, left. But now here comes Dunbar on the jet sweep. Don't be surprised as the game goes on. They use that Dunbar jet sweep, and they just run a more conventional run run game with Artis Payne. So it's almost like you're showing that, and then later you do the opposite, right? It's a nice, nice fourth down call there by Cal Mummy. Dunbar stays in. He'll throw. Jones pressure. Gets away. Still looking down the field. And there's the big tight end, Parham, who's got his first catch. And he gets it down to the 11. Nice job there by Landry Jones. He, he's not. No one's going to mistake him for P.J. Walker. But he just moved around just enough in the pocket to find his big tight end. Uh, and, and big would be an understatement. 6'8", 257 out of Stetson. He's only 22 years old, which is crazy. Look what he did in 2018. We'll get back to it. Jones firing. He's got him open and rolling his way in the end zone for the touchdown. <laughs> Any means possible, and Dallas is on the board. Right on cue. I got a little nervous when he tried to stretch the ball that it came out. Let's see. The official was pretty fast signaling touchdown. Let's see. Great catch. Look at that body control for a six. For a 6'8 guy, that's not easy. Yeah. Is he yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I think it's a fumble. Receiver was never down by contact. Rolled into the end zone with control oh, for a touchdown. Oh, I, I gotta see that again. That is ultra close, and I think I'm with you. I think that ball came out inch shy of the goal line. Landry Jones just puts the ball in front of him. It's a walk-in. Let's see here. Jones, Jones. Oh, my goodness. I think it's out, KB. Let's see if they review Dallas it. Dallas is going for two right. from the five-yard line. Looks like they're going to stick with it. Hurry up. J.J. Linda. J.J. Linda. J.J. Linda. J.J. Linda. J.J. Linda. I, I guess that one's going to stay, and that was close. Yeah, good for him, though. Yeah, exactly. And Dallas gets maybe a little break. They'll go for two. Jones has all day. Firing, and he's got the two. Parham standing straight up. quarterback's dream what a great response from this Dallas offense and it all started now we see a three-man bunch now by Dallas and you see Parm he just runs and he's just gonna say I'm big I'm gonna get in the back underneath the goalpost you're gonna put it high and outside and I'm just gonna go track it not a real sophisticated scheme there that's just realizing your personnel I mean look at the size of him the ability to run, you saw him the touchdown, reaching behind him, twisting, catching that ball in his hands. People don't understand or appreciate how hard that is. 
let alone to be 6'8". I mean, really impressive. And so, the 12-yard touchdown to Parham and then the two-point conversion. To give you an idea just how big he is, and Cabello, the tight ends are all big, including the one I'm standing next to. Because this guy stinks right here. Uh, yeah, right, this whatever. Guy, uh, that guy I disagree here. with that. But look, Gronk, who we all know is a monster, 6'6", six, six, and weighs a little less. You're 6'5", you're a big, big man. 6'8", nearly 260 is what Parham is. Now on the run back, here comes Houston and Jane a. Harris with a good return. But new life for Dallas after that kickoff went out of bounds, they take advantage. They did, and those, those unforced errors kill a team. You lose all your momentum. Yesterday, Ted Cottrell said he wished he had a Houston Rockets basketball player to come in and kind of simulate Parham running up and down the seam. Little did he realize that was going to play out today. I know one person likes it. That's Landry Jones is with Jenny. <laughs> all right, Landry, the turnaround for you. Look, I know there was frustration, but having that touchdown, finding Donald again and finding him for the two points, just what went into the change round and what were you telling yourself? Oh, you just got to keep firing, you know, something like that. I mean, Three picks on your first, like, basically three throws kind of sucks. But it's only 15 8. We're only down by one score, so we got to just keep playing. Love it. All about what you do now. Thank you. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, we got a game. I like it. Landry, a little sigh of relief. Jenny? All right, so let's bring in Dean Blandino. Dean, this uh, the play to par, maybe Dallas got a little break, but I don't know. What, what did you see? Uh, it was very close on that goal line play. It was close. Two things. Did he catch it? He did. And now he reaches the ball out for the goal line. But to me, you look at this shot, this is a great look. It's, it's not obvious that he clearly had control when the ball broke the play. And the play should have been stopped for further review. we got to take more time and look at that. And, uh, and again, it has to be obvious to confirm it. And it's just not obvious. All right, Dean, appreciate that. Always good, Greg, to know that we're not seeing things. But nonetheless, Dallas gets a break. Here's Williams for Houston, breaking tackles. And has a first down. But all that being said, it was so needed for the Renegades. They were just down and out. And now it's 15-8. And there's, there's Parham. You know, I, I have to ask, because we're talking during the week, and obviously I'm asking you, 22-year-old kid, you watch his body movements. And, you know, he got a, a brief flicker of a chance in the NFL. It just feels like he's got such a bright future. He does. This, this is just scratching the surface. And Bob Stoops said the same thing. This kid's just getting started. Watching tape of him this week, I came away saying, this guy, he's got some unique traits that you can't coach. You can't coach being tall and athletic and catch the ball outside the framework of your body. And, you know, we all saw that highlight that went viral last week. 21 miles an hour at 260 pounds. It's just unheard of. It's great for this league, for a guy like him to get this opportunity to play with this caliber of coaching, this caliber of, of players, and just fine-tune and get that experience is just invaluable. We, this is not the last time we're going to hear about this kid. Yeah, Stu told us he started very slow, but then it's just gotten better and better as the week's gone on, and you're seeing it here. Meanwhile, oh! Roughnecks on the drive. Second and four for Walker. Blitz coming, gets it out of the flat. Lewis has another one, and nice hit. He's going to be stopped a yard short of a first down. Donatello Brown with a solid stick out of the secondary. This Renegades defense has really been put on their heels here early, but they've held every single one of their opponents this year under 20 points. Number one scoring defense in the league. I know they've given up 15, but obviously there's some extenuating circumstances to that. But they've, 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 held, they've held together against a very good Houston offense today, and that's really been the story of the whole season. Roughnecks 0 for 3 on third down. He's so Chris Woods in there, encouraging. Walker. Pocket collapsing. How in the world did he get to the first down marker? But there's a flag, so maybe it won't count. He just kind of slithers his way, and next thing you know, he's got five yards. But see if it's coming back. Holding. Offense number 79. 10-yard penalty. It's still third down. Terry Poole here, the left tackle. Kind of like we talked about earlier on the run on the run play for Dallas. When a quarterback starts moving off his spot, yeah, he just he just got enough of that guy. But when the quarterback moves off his spot, the defenders can see it. The offensive lineman can't see it. And sometimes when the defender changes pads on quick, their hands are engaged and they just can't help themselves. And 
We've seen it now twice today. Third down, they get a quick hitter out here to Blake Jackson. Gets it blocked up to midfield. So now a fourth down and four, and it feels like an area where you'd go for it on fourth here. I think so. I don't think they're going to. I think teams are still trying to kind of figure out the, the analytics of fourth down conversions. Uh, Houston's one of the, they've gone for some of the, the most, the fewest fourth down conversions in the entire XFL. One, that's it. They, yeah, so it's just not, it's really not in their, you know, it's just not in their repertoire right now. I don't know if they just feel like they're not prepared for it. It's not in their personnel package. I think teams are still trying to figure out how it plays into effect with the new punt rules and the touchbacks and whatnot. But it's clear, as you said, they've only gone one time on fourth down, and they just don't feel comfortable right now pushing the envelope. Nagel going to call a fair catch, and we'll do it out at the 18. So Dallas trying to build a little momentum behind their defense. Got a good one in Arlington. The Texas throwdown. So far, Houston with the early edge, 15-8. A lot more game to go. more XFL game on the weekend when we're done here. Flip it on over to ESPN2. Cardell Jones looking for a little redemption. A tough one last week. He and the D.C. Defenders take on the Tampa Bay Vipers 7 Eastern. That'll conclude the weekend. Week 4 in the XFL. But we got a long way to go on this one. Good start. Well, I guess it wasn't if you're a Dallas fan because Landry Jones threw three interceptions. But give credit to him and the offense. They got it back. Touchdown two-point conversion. And now they're back at it on offense. They'll just start this drive on their own 18-yard line with Cameron Artis Payne in the backfield. Houston shows blitz. They're gonna try and set up a screen, get a good block. Payne. It looked like that was gonna go even farther than it did, but it ended up going about a yard. It was well played by Gates and Lewis, a couple linebackers for Houston. Yeah, Gates, Gates is really the guy that sets the tone for them on defense. He's their leading tackler. I mean, this is a guy his entire career back at What's Mississippi that? and three years in a row led the SEC in tackles last year the oh, AAF no. was leading the league in tackles this guy can just find the ball Artis Payne slips the tackle surging forward out to about the 27 yard line another nice run it's gonna have about eight spring of a third and short and just as I say to that, you see Gay kind of pounding his chest saying, that's on me. <laughs> he had he had Cap locked up in the backfield, but Cameron's pain is so uh, elusive. He's so deceiving. He's hard to bring to the ground. He's very smooth. And Gates got up saying, I got to make that play. <laughs> Give it to him again. Sprinting to the post, and he is not going to get there. And boy, Al Mummy took a shot. Bring on the field as the runner was short of the line again. Thank goodness, Al right in there. And hopefully he's okay getting helped up. He was trying to get out of the way. He turned his back. Just had nowhere to go. Hopefully he's all right. Goodness, Al's got a bad back too, so. He's tough. He's you know, a ball coach, though. That's a couple hairs out of place, but he's a, all right. That's a football guy through and through right there, man. They're more embarrassed than they are hurt, right? Those guys take a lot of pride in being tough. They don't want to be helped up. He's old school. But Houston defense has the job on third and short. Good high punt. Mobley drops it, picks it up, and there's nowhere to go. Nice job by Drew Galitz on a punch with no return. And Houston backed up in their own territory. That's where we'll get a chance to say P.J. Walker one more time. Never know what he's going to do. Roughnecks in the lead. Oh, well, you know this, Hal Mummy is tough. You see Cameron on his page, he's like, I'm sorry, coach. I'm sorry. And you, and you know what, Greg? As you see on the fall, he lost the trusted towel. The towel is now back in place. And this has been something that's with Hal for a long time, going back to his days at Kentucky. He's like, you know, in Kentucky, I actually had, if I dropped it, I had someone pick it up, put it back on my shoulder. So you remember Jerry Tartadian, the legendary UNLV coach, always had the towels, shooting on the towels. Hal's got his own towel. And... Um, to quote him, I asked him about it the other day, he said it's got many uses. Many uses. He's got back support. He's got an ability to stretch his bad neck. He's got some other uses for it. We won't, we won't share. He says it's absorbing. It's absorbing. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Walker going deep, going for it all. Contact with Mobley and now a flag. But it didn't look like much, but there was contact with Donatello Brown. And we'll 
Short out the penalty. I hope one of these other guys had a better angle, these other officials, because it didn't look like he did anything. He just fell down, KB. They pick this up. It, it seems like they're having a nice long conversation. Contact is incidental. Yeah, I, think, okay. I, think, I think that's a great job. After discussion, Stephen Turner has no foul on the play. The defensive pass in the field. Second down. I think you give this crew credit because I, I, I initially, aesthetically, it looked way worse than it was. You know. Yeah, I think I think live. Anytime you see a receiver have contact, go to the ground, ball lands relatively in the vicinity, but it just didn't seem to me like Brown did anything other than just run stride for stride with him. He tried the receiver tried to react behind him. The ball was a little off off target. Mobley's just trying to react to the ball and just kind of tripped. It's a great job by the officials working together. Okay, so a second and ten is Holly in motion. He's got the touchdown catch today. And Walker to throw it. Four man rush. Now pressures. Tries to have a screen with Williams. Gets a block. Gets another. Gets a first down. Andre Williams on the receiving end. Got a great block by his center, Rainey. Great job here by Walker. It wasn't. He, Williams didn't get out super clean. He kind of was off his time. And watch Walker. He wants to throw it. Just keeps retreating, retreating, buys time for Williams to get out in space. It's nice to see Andre Williams be worked in. We talked a little bit about James Butler. But. I mean, and Andre Williams, he was an absolute stud in college. I mean, this guy was a unanimous All-American, all-everything at Boston College. It's good to see them work him into the system a little bit. This pressure, and he works him into the system by default. He had to get rid of it. He got it to Williams, but Deron Smith, the safety, we see him really for the first time today with an excellent tackle. Yeah, they do a good job. They, they're letting Walker know, hey, Phillips is unblocked. If you're, if you don't, we don't have him blocked. You got to get this ball out. Williams is his, his outlet and kind of his check. Um, but a great job by the Renegades defense. They understood with the pressure where he would be forced to go with the ball. A great rally tackle. It's a good job by this Renegades defense. On second down, another quick hitter. He gets to the far side of Holly, who slips his way up to the 40. You know, it's interesting. We came on this broadcast talking about Cam Phillips, and why not? He leads the league with seven touchdown catches. He also leads the league with 20 receptions coming into the weekend. Well, Cam Phillips has, uh, has been a non-factor. Just one catch for nine yards so far. Josh Hawkins has been matched up with him. And, you know, I don't even know if it's so much that they worry that Hawkins is capable of shutting him down. I just think they had, I think June Jones came into the game conscious of trying to work this ball around, be a, be a little less one-dimensional where every ball is thrown to Phillips. And knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Well, that's a big play. Frank Alexander, another one of your former teammates, comes up huge, the veteran. I, I, just, I asked him yesterday how Frank was doing. I just really enjoyed playing with Frank. Very familiar with Bob Stoops, Oklahoma kid. Suffered a tough injury in training camp one year, ruptured his Achilles, had some other off the field stuff, but great kid. Everybody who coaches him and plays with him loves him. It's great to see him get another opportunity, and he's making his presence felt there with a big third down batted ball. Probably saved the first down, too, because Lewis was open, so it'll force a punt. Flynn Nagel back deep, and this is a short kick. Nagel gonna let it bounce and it takes a great Dallas bounce and a stop right around the 40. That did not get it done. It's a 20-yard punt. And so Dallas will be in business. Before next weekend's XFL action kicks off, download the Fox Sports Super 6 app and play the XFL game for free for a chance to win up to $10,000. So all that's gone on in this first half, where it seemed like at one point the score was about 40 to nothing. It's only a 15-8 game in Dallas with great field position to start the drive. 3:07 to go in this first half. Ready, go ahead. Quick out, Ferguson. Jazz Ferguson goes nowhere. He's had a couple opportunities today, and he's kind of stuck in the mud. Second down. Yeah, both teams do a great job. I mean, these all go in the stat sheet as throws and pass completions. But in these Hal Mummy, June Jones-style offenses, those are really just extensions of the run game. They consider those 
quick completions. You see everybody kind of blocking from the jump. Those are just runs. It's a way to get the ball on the perimeter really quickly. You're going to see both teams do that. Jones, near sideline, feet inbounds. Looks like yes. Good for a first down. It's Jeff Bedette, his first reception today. This is a guy that the Renegades really want to get going. He's been a little frustrated with his role the first couple weeks. He's a guy that they think can really do some things to complement the tight ends, Parham. We got him again. I don't, I don't know if this play is going to count, but I have no idea how Dunbar picked up that, that blitz because Landry Jones was about to get smoked. I feel like... I feel like they could have called the play dead. I feel like he was almost got killed, like you said. Let's see what they call. They Outside, he said, number 97. To finish on Bidette, he's a guy, you know, everyone talks about the two running backs, of course, Donald Parham, the big tight end slash receiver. But this is a guy that they feel if they can add now him into this offense, they can really become a little bit more versatile, a little bit more multi multifaceted well, he's not going to get credit for the last catch but still keeps the first one I still like the thought process it still works yeah the description still valid he, he's a guy that they they really think highly of and and they understand his production is maybe not to where it should be they're conscious of it get him go and get him into the game there's part of him. and he couldn't corral it you know, it's funny, right, because we, we, we talked about how this game, this pass game came into today, number one in the league pass offense, but it goes through the running back. So there's only so many balls to go around. You want to get your receiver going, but who they like. You love the tight end who's got a touchdown today. So you've only got so much to spread around, right? Yeah, and both these offenses, they're cut kind of from the same cloth in that hey, regard. Lucky, lucky. And uh, no, 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 no. it's a challenge don't, to don't, spread don't, the ball don't, around. I think right don't, now don't. Houston's doing a little bit better job today <laughs> than Dallas. We have hit the two-minute warning from Arlen where the Roughnecks got off to a great start. But here come the Renegades within a score and on the move. Good one from Arlington. Well, it could have started much worse for Landry Jones, but to his credit, it's gotten back on track. You see the second quarter, he's found a little rhythm. He got his team into the end zone, and we got ourselves a game. It's 15 to 8. All right, here you go, Landry. With two here minutes go. to go in this first half. Comeback period in the XFL, so the play clock will stop after everything before it rolls again after five seconds runoff. So really got a chance to take your time. Each team has two timeouts, too. On second down, Jones over the middle, and he's got a completion. There's Parham, and he's got a first down. It's the same concept he scored his touchdown on. That time they defended it a little bit better. It's just a very basic, they call it a mesh concept. One receiver goes under, one receiver comes over the top, and if it's zoned, you just stop. It's the same play he scored on. Now he's picked up another first down, same concept. Monday. Ready to go ahead. Four-man rush. Jones has time for sideline, and he's got Jazz Ferguson. That time he makes the play. And Ferguson gets up to the 31. Second down. Here you go. Mexico. It's funny to see them not in a real sense of urgency with these new timing rules under two minutes. They have a ton of time. Clock doesn't start for a little bit after each play. It's Monday. much different than people are typically used to seeing under two minutes. It is unique. Here's Dunbar. He's got the first down, and again, time will stop here. So we've got all day. Let's listen to Hal Mummy. Ted Cottrell not thrilled, apparently, at what's going on. Here's Jones on first down. Pressure up the middle. Near side in traffic. Boy, tough decision. A Jane A. Harris was all over it. I don't think that one ever had a chance, but Det was the nearest renegade. Yeah, he kind of had to throw that one a little off balance. You see the pressure coming here off the left side. Kind of gets in his face. They run a little stunt. And just being on your heels, falling to your left as a righty quarterback. You just you can't get quite enough on that ball. He's lucky that wasn't his fourth pick. Monday. 
Second and ten. Again, they go far side. Again, they go to Ferguson. Makes a man miss. And a short game to the 25. Let's go hear the play calls again. Let's go open Roxy Dog. Open Roxy Dog. Ralph, Ralph. Ralph, Ralph. Ralph, Ralph. This is all tough one, dog. This is all tough one, dog. Third and eight. Pressure. Jones sets it up to Dunbar. Oh, what a tackle that was by Brown. You hear Ted Catrelli says saw one right saw cover one. So saw both the Sam and the Will are gonna blitz. Then everybody else, when they say cover one, is just man with a single safety. So the whole time you see him there, he's just tracking the back. Brown has the back man-to-man. -man. Perfect call by Ted Cottrell there on third down. Perfect, he dialed it up at the perfect time. So if Brown doesn't make that tackle and describing the defense you just did, he might score. He's gone. Every, so cover one, saw. There's no extra run defender. We're going to blitz five. We're going to bring Sam Will, all three D linemen. And everybody else is just matched up man to man. Brown's got the back. That's a tough assignment. He does a great job in space bringing him down. And like you said, if, if he's not there, it's a touchdown. Everyone else's backs return chasing their man coverage. Well done by Vinicius Brown to make that stop. And so it sets up a 46 yard field goal for Austin McGinnis, who is seven for seven perfect on the year. And try to get Dallas just a little bit closer with 55 seconds left. Houston called the timeout to save some time. But again, in this league with the clock stopping after every play, if they get the ball back, they've got eons of time. This will be the season long for McGinnis. Previous long was 45. This 46 yards away. They got a four point game. Guinness is up and through. Kicked that one to the stratosphere and came on down where it was supposed to, and it's a four-point game. Meanwhile, Bob Stoops has the mic on for us today. Let's go all access with the Dallas coach. Huge game for us, all right? Let's make sure we're earning it, fighting for it every damn snap, right? Yeah. Oh, Flynn. All right. That's it, buddy. Just keep playing ball. Keep playing ball. Yeah, Frank! Good job, Frank! That's the way to go, buddy. Yeah, good job. You know, we talked to Stoops the other day, and he said, are you enjoying this? You know, it looks like you're enjoying it. He said, you know, I, I don't know. The cameras caught me with a smile, and I'm not sure I had one any other time during the game last week. He didn't sound happy that people thought he was having fun. I think he wanted his old kind of mantra to be the grizzly old ball coach, but it does appear that he's having fun. I mean, that was a little insight right there, cheering his guys on, being super supportive of Landry, who struggled early, you know, meeting him halfway on the field, pumping up his old guy, Frank, that he had. It does seem like he's having more fun, and he might not want to admit it, but... I think Landry Jones said it. He said, well, I yeah. think it's different. He had 13, uh, 17 and 18-year-old kids. Now he's dealing with older, mature guys, guys that have families, and it's a little less... I don't have to go on the recruiting trail. Here is the kick return taken by Lewis, and penalty flags fly on the play with 45 seconds to go in this first half, and we'll sort this out. Not sure if it's the wind or what, but both teams have seemed like they've struggled kicking off, right? Yeah, they Seen have. Seen the ball out of bounds. That ball barely reached the 20. It was winds it gusting was. to 19 miles an hour before, and it's been a windy couple of days here in the Arlington area. During the return, holding, receiving team number 15. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first down, Houston. So Houston will have a way to go. Gives us a second to tell you that the heavyweights will be back on Fox. Adam Babyface Kovnatsky putting his undefeated record on the line against the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenes. The Battle of Brooklyn begins Saturday at 8 Eastern on Fox. And the Fox Sports app. Looking forward to that. Show you that flag. It is gusting here today. So 45 seconds to go. One timeout, but the clock stops after every play for Houston. Ah! is back in the game at running back. Missed a series or two. Give it to him right at the middle. Huge hole. James Butler 
And that's a good start to this drive out to the 27. Yeah, like you said, these timing rules allow you now, with only one timeout, traditional timing rules, you wouldn't expect to see a run get tackled in bounds. But here, stopping the clock, you really have your entire playbook at your disposal. Walker, four-man rush, some pressure, buys time, points deep, throwing across his body. That was an insane throw, trying to get it to Phillips, and it was incomplete. Yeah, I think June Jones just held his breath a little bit there. I know I did. The, the crazy thing about Walker, he's such a good athlete. We saw on the point after conversion, making that guy miss. He's so smooth. When he runs, he's running to look to throw the ball. You saw him there. He could have gotten a couple yards and gotten out of bounds. Some of their biggest plays on the year have been him moving, him scrambling, eyes down the field, looking to let it rip to a guy, scramble drill or breaking off his route. That one was a little dangerous, but he got away with it. Still looking, sidearm delivery incomplete. There's some contact. Trying to get it to Holly. There's no flag. So a third down and 10. June Jones wants that flag. Live, it looked like Holly, the contact with Holly was a little early, but you know what? At this point in the game, guys are playing. Let's see here. Holly's coming across. Yeah, it's close. I think in live action, that's bang, bang. I don't mind them letting that go. But another example of Walker breaking contain, little sidearm sling. And if there's no contact there, that's probably a completion. But Dallas calls a timeout because they figure, hey, if they can make a stop here, they can have at least a player too. And this is for as good as Houston's offense has been. On third down, They've been pretty abysmal this year, Greg. I mean, they came in at 30 percent. X Indy choice special. Let's go half with it and see the, the coverage. Just right half. 81 X Indy choice special. Just to finish the thought, they're 0 for 5 on third down today. That's the play they're going to run. You just put down so you can make you go third. You got a little more room. He's the X receiver. It trips right so the three other receivers are to the to the wide side of the field. And he's telling Coates, if you get the right look, we're going to convert you to a nine, he called it, which is just a fade, go, and let's just put the ball out there and see if you can run under it. All depends on what coverage they get. Walker stands in, sidearm delivery. Holly makes a cut up the field, and Holly should have the first down, depending on the spot. So Kyler Murray here in attendance looking on today. And it is enough for a first down. There's Kyler. Offseason watching a little football. Why not? So now time is a factor. 12 seconds left to go in the half. Houston has one timeout. Three man rush. Walker over the middle. He's got a completion. And it's Lewis with three seconds ago. They've got a timeout. Houston. And they're going to have to take it here. They do. Thought that was interesting. Final time out of the half by Houston. 30 seconds time out. You know, I think, again, we talked about before, teams are still trying to figure out how to handle fourth down conversions, how it fits with the new punt rules and whatnot. I think teams are still trying to figure out the timing mechanics. I think, you know, they, they only left themselves three seconds. I think if they could have used their remaining timeout a little earlier in the drive, after one of the plays, you know, Holly's tackled in bounds, they could buy themselves a handful of four seconds, knowing that you do have time to get up and clock the ball on a first down. I still think they're trying to figure all that out. I think as the season goes on, these coaches will get a better feel for timeout usage, clock stoppage. You know, it's a fascinating point. And it looks like that Houston's going to set up for a 60-yard field goal by Sergio Castillo. He's got a couple of those today. The wind is with him. At least it appears now looking at the flags on the goalposts. But 60 yards clearly would be an early. XFL record. Deron Smith is back to return it if it's way short. Maybe see a little history. Castillo. That is going to be well short. Smith's going to try a return. Nothing to lose. Smith makes a man miss. Makes another. Deron Smith has some blocking. Still going. 
<laughs> heck of a return. He made it exciting. He got all the way out to the 45-yard line, and the half ends with some sizzle. A 50-yard return. So quite a first half down the sideline. June Jones is with Jenny Taft. Kevin, thank you. Well, June, in terms of the way this started, it was all your defense with those three interceptions. You got the score from Walker to Holly, but we're dealing with a four-point game. What do you need to see in the second to close it out? Well, we got to uh, move the ball a little bit more consistently and try to take the football away again. You know, they, they're back in the game, and, uh, you know, when we didn't score three touchdowns with those three, that kind of comes back to haunt you, so, so hopefully we will. Cam Phillips, just one catch in the first half. He really, the one to watch coming into this thing, how do you get him going? Uh, well, he's just got to do his job and P.J. will throw it to him when he's open. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Coach, Jenny, thank you very much. <laughs> I love that. To the point, throw it to him when he's open. Meanwhile, remember, Houston got out to a 15-0 lead, but Dallas has come back in this one. We've reached the break. 15-11, Houston in front. More to do. Halftime for Marlington. Be a champion, okay? Get it done. Big time divisional game here. Huge game for us. Texas throw down the big today, baby. You know what time it is. Yeah. Cody Brown has the interception. This is what's plagued Dallas all year. They lead the league in turnovers. Landry Jones has really struggled. This is one of those kids you just can't help but cheer for. Firing. He's got him open and Parham rolling his way in the end zone for the touchdown. Today's progressive game flow and a good one at the half. You see the numbers. It's 15 to 11. Houston in front of Dallas. First half stats brought to you by Fox Bed. And so I, I look at this game, Greg Olson, and I think about how it could have gone. And uh, by the way, I think we have the same tailor. It's like it al almost a replica Power blue. without even talking. But you think about it, it was 15 and nothing. Landry Jones through three interceptions. I mean, it could have been an ultimate disaster. And here it's a four point game. Yeah, this, this had just a mess written all over it here. If you're a Dallas fan, if you're a Dallas Renegade player, but their defense hung tight. They were resilient. They got two stops, held the two field goals, and then obviously on the third one, they just couldn't hold and, and gave up the touchdown. But to find yourself only down 15 to 11 at halftime, Bob Stoops has to be somewhat thrilled that they were able to weather that storm. And you heard June Jones, he told Jenny, he said, listen, the fact that we didn't score three touchdowns off those three turnovers is the reason that this is even still a game. So they're all, they all understand uh, that this could have been a whole different situation at halftime, but we find ourselves 15 to 11, and Dallas is still in this game. And you see Landry Jones, that start. I mean, he had three completions to his own team, three to the other team, but he has come on, and so has Dallas and their offensive coordinator, Hal Mummy, who I, I think is okay after getting whacked on the sideline. Jenny Taft, tell us more. Kevin, don't worry. I talked to him after the ball. He's totally fine. And, Coach, I want to ask you about just the offense and the turnaround for Landry Jones. I saw you guys spending a lot of time together. How he responded and ended the half. How do you want to see him carry that momentum in the second? No, he's, he's, a, he's a competitor. You know, he's only had nine workouts. He missed six weeks of training camp and, and the first week of the season. So he's still knocking the rest off with these receivers. And uh, the first two picks really weren't his fault. They just ran bad routes. All right, look forward to the second thing you put. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Oh, look, so there you go. You didn't like the routes, but that, that's see, that's an interesting take. Yeah, I, we kind of talked uh, talked on the first one. It seemed like the receiver Landry expected him to be a little flatter. The one that Cody Brown kind of jumped, kind of kept his angle high. That's probably what Hal Mummy's talking about. But uh, you know, sometimes picks get thrown on guys, and if you're the quarterback, you got to shoulder, you got to shoulder the good with the bad. And uh, but sometimes there's a lot more nuance to it. It's good to see both Bob Stoops now and Hal Mummy kind of say, hey. Let's not pile on our guy. He's doing fine. He'll continue to improve as the game goes on, but these guys around him got to help him out. How much do you think, and I'm not saying that Bob Stoops would have benched anybody else, but, you know, Landry had a storied career under Bob Stoops at Oklahoma. The fact that he knows him so well, how much do you think it helps in a situation like that? I think it helps a ton. I think he's seen over the years how Landry Jones responds to adversity, how he responds to throwing a pick. I think, you know, he obviously knows this kid really, really well. He he targeted Landry at a retirement and said, hey, I want you to lead this team. I want you to be our quarterback here in Dallas. And uh, I think that familiarity, it's more trust than it is just blind loyalty. I think he just trusts and he understands what kind of kid Landry Jones is, and he realizes he'll hang in there. And so here we go with the second half. Walter with some room to roll. And gets stacked up before the 25, and 
pushes it across to the 26, and that's where we will see Landry Jones in this offense. A little Third. helmet cam action. Third. This has been a, a second half team. I mean, Third. so much Third. so. You look at the 43 points compared Third. to 15, second half and first half. Everything is so much better in the second half. It's hard to figure out why. I'm not even sure the Renegades know why, but that has been the story of their season so far. And as we said, I think Bomb Stoops right now obviously doesn't want to throw three picks in the first One three possessions, but I think he's feeling pretty good. And that second half play, I think, is a big reason why. Artist Payne makes a mad miss. Good play. And just to get a yard on that play, because it could have been a five, six yard loss, second down. Yeah, I think this is a big drive for Dallas here. I think you kind of weathered the storm early, kind of got some of the hiccups out of the way. I'm fine, I'm fine. Let's come out here and really put a good possession together and go down and get points. One day. Pretty good. Artist Payne wrestled down to the ground. Corey Crawford. some mix up here with the blocking scheme. You see the right guard here. Alex Balducci. Oh, the center didn't block the nose guard. I think the center thought the right guard was going to come with him, and nobody ended up blocking, blocking the nose guard. That's probably the easiest play he'll make all day. So it turns into a third and long. Four-man rush. Jones over the middle. Completion, but nowhere near a first is Flynn Nagel. And the Houston defense seemingly forces a three and out and yeah, that's exactly what's happening punt team coming on kind of an uninspiring first three plays of the half kind of a kind of a soft little swing on the first play for not a whole lot and then obviously second down they kind of blew the interior line kind of blew the blocking scheme and then fourth and long and they threw it four yards so not the drive that we had talked about i'm sure not the drive that they talked about at halftime but a nice job by this houston defense getting a quick three and out Wobbly kick, Raheem Malone up to get it. Going to make some moves, pretty well covered by the Renegades. Rear Martini was down on the stuff. So here comes B.J. Walker, first half, 14 of 25, 131 yards and a touchdown. That was one of the highlights, a little back shoulder to Nick Holly, who had a nice first half himself. And then Walker got him in the end zone with Holly, his first XFL touchdown. And then he said, you know what, going for three, I'm just going to do it myself. Yeah, I think he had a good, maybe not a great, under his kind of standard of expectations that he's set so far through the season. But as the half went on, he got better, kind of got that slow one for six start out of his system. And since then, he's been pretty good. I think you expect him to continue to build as this second half progresses. Man leads the XFL in yards and touchdown pass. This one tipped in the air and incomplete. That one hung up there for a while. Frank Alexander batting down his second pass of the day. Dodged a bullet there. Like I said earlier, anytime the ball's deflected and it's landed, it's in the air that long. Just a lot of guys around, zone coverage, eyes at the quarterback. Hey, we got 50 third. PJ Walker and Houston, they really dodged a bullet there. They're lucky that wasn't a pick deep in their own territory. Second down pressure. They get it out in the flat to Butler, and he's out to the 35. You know, on, on that drop back on that pass, not that one, but the first down play, it was interesting because you asked June Jones a question about the drop backs for Walker. They're different than most. He drops back at angles sometimes. He does, and I, and I asked June about it. I said, is that just something that P.J. Walker did, or is that just how his drop is? He said, no. He goes, we coached that. We understand which side we're protected, which side we're not protected with the offensive line assignments, and he's always going to be taught to drop on an angle away from the open side where he's not protected and buy himself an extra yard or two to get the ball out of his hand. Long throw coming near sideline, and he's got a catch and a first down. It's Sammy Coates to move the chains. The timing and the rhythm of this play here, this is this is big time. Look, he's throwing this ball from the right hash to the wide side of the field. Sammy Coach just runs a speed out. This is a timed rhythm throw. But he's throwing that ball all the way to the wide side of the field in rhythm, no hitch, off his back foot. 
That's a big time throw and catch there between Walker and Coates. Walker standing in, floats one going deep down the field, knocked away. That was a beautiful play by Deshaun Phillips. Step for step on the coverage. Yeah, and the safety there, Deron Smith, he covered a lot of ground. If he catches this ball, he's probably going to get knocked pretty good. You see him, he just runs what they call a big box fade, an inside fade. But you see 31 kind of do a little flyby. He's a guy the coaches talk about. He kind of leads that secondary. He's kind of the guy that puts everybody in position and really sets the tone. Really nice job by Darren Smith there, covering a ton of ground from his free safety position. Second down. Walker gets it blocked up, and it's intercepted. There's your guy, Smith. He almost made it the play before, and he makes it here with his first interception of the year. Well, right on cue, there he is. He's just playing center field. His eyes are in the backfield. He's slow with his with his drop. And Raheem Malone just runs a square in. Back-to-back -back great plays. You see him here. That's Smith. You see 15 in the slot. He's playing safety, and he just drives this. I mean, look, he saw that coming all the way. Didn't even really backpedal too much. Just sat there on his hash. And when he saw... Malone come out of his break. He put his foot in the ground and he drove that ball. Only the second turnover for this Houston offense all year, but great play by Smith. Here's Dunbar on the swing pass. You know, Smith is he's been around a little bit. He was a former six-round pick of the Bengals back in 2015 and then spent time with the Browns and Vikings organizations. Uh, he has had a good start. Hey, I was trying to get to that one. Well, he didn't try it. Hey, he got there. Same, actually. Same route in <laughs> you hear what he said? He said that's the same route they ran in practice. Tuesday. That's pretty good. Tuesday. I love getting to hear these guys' conversations after plays Tuesday. like that. It's so cool. It's awesome. Second down, no play. Penalty flags. It's just so cool to see their, their just natural reaction, natural conversation that you have on the bench. Yo. DB, man, we just out here trying to make plays, baby. That's what we do. Everybody here can make plays. Whole secondary. Foster, offense, guard, five-yard penalty. It's second down. Oh, you heard about Smith saying the whole secondary can make plays. Well, Phillips did the play before, and then Smith did right there. And now, uh, Dallas, even after the penalty, a chance to take their first lead after being down 15 to nothing. Monday. Pretty good. Houston shows blitz. They come with it on the draw, and Dunbar gets swallowed up. Another play that time by Crawford in the middle. It just seems like they've gotten a little conservative here, Kevin. I think they came out the second half, getting the ball first, three and out. Now after the turnover, they find themselves in third and 14. Kind of an uninspiring start to the third quarter here. I don't think Houston could... By Houston. Yeah, Houston couldn't get their right personnel on the field. They didn't feel good about how they lined up on that third down. Let's go down to Jenny, the most recent hero of this one, Jenny. We love the heroes around here, and it was time for Dallas to get the interception as well. Just take me through the play and the celebration, because you said you didn't necessarily want to run all the way down there, but you got to do it for the fans. Yeah, um, the play was something that we've seen uh, all week in practice. Just able to execute, trust my teammates, he's going to have me over the top. I was able to make a play, and yeah, I didn't want to run all the way down there with my, my teammates. They're like, come on, D, come on. So I'm like, all right, let's go. So we had to, had to get, had to get the picks, yeah. Had to get it. All right, well, keep it up. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Jenny, thanks. Love that. You had to go. The teammates are egging him on. And by the way, Deron Smith at the end of the half, gosh, he almost ran that missed field goal back. So he's had a couple of, uh, couple of cool plays here this afternoon. It's only the second interception of the year for P.J. Walker. You know, the Dallas offense sputtering in this second Monday. half, third and long. Ready, go ahead. Four-man rush, pressure up the middle. Jones delivers a high ball. It's incomplete. You know it's high when he can't get into the 6'8 tight end parham. It's again, it's the third time now they've run that exact same play. The touchdown, the earlier third down. They're running, really running only a handful of plays. I don't know if that's just how Hal Mummy feels their matchups are best or how he, you know, it's just plays that Landry Jones can really see clearly and deliver the ball on time. But he had Parham open. He had him open. He just, like you said, he sailed the ball on a 6'8 guy. It just, he's got to set his feet, 
Deliver the ball on time. They probably pick that, that third long up. Here's the punt. It is a booming spiral. Mobley way back at the 10. Covered well by the Renegades after a five-yard return. Uh, Drew Galitz has had a couple great punts today. Houston's defense holds after the 48-yard punt. Their football and their lead by four here at Arlington. Roughnecks up by four. Houston has the ball. Last time they did go through an interception. Let's go all access with June Jones after that. Got to come downhill, 815. Get downhill. Huh? Get downhill. Beat him to the ball. That's why you go downhill. He's squatting, right? So you got to get downhill. So I think that's fascinating for a lot of reasons because you had a really interesting conversation with June Jones. We heard Deron Smith mic'd up saying, hey, I saw that play on film. So that's why he was squatting on the route at the pit after the play as Walker back and goes over the middle. And there's Mobley. He's got a catch and a first down. But you found out that these routes are maybe a little different than most run. Yeah, and you hear him say there, these receivers, which is which is pretty Red right, stack left, which is pretty atypical. Every single receiver has the ability to adjust his route based on where the defense is. It's built into this June Jones system, and you see him there telling Raheem Moore, "You got to come downhill." What he means is when that guy's squatting, you heard him say he's squatting, coach. He's squatting. You almost have to not only go at a 90 degree angle, you actually have to start working back to the quarterback at such a severe angle so he can't drive the route. Walker running people over. P.J. Walker put the shoulder pads down and took a right to Donatello Brown. And look at his own linemen. They love it. Let's hear it. They love it. <laughs> That's awesome. At least he led with his non-throwing shoulder. Oh. I don't know that the coaches would love that, but boy, 15 yards may give this team a little bit of spark. And his guys love his O-line. He had like four O-linemen going to help him off the ground. It just ignites your entire team. You see your best player selling out. Dallas comes with the blitz on the run at Butler. But I want to get back to this. So you're telling me that this team does not have, you know, a lot of receivers that count steps, they do different things. They literally get up the line, and, and the quarterback and receiver have to trust each other enough that they will adjust to the coverage to see. Right, 33. Yeah. They're counting on the receiver and the quarterback seeing the game through the same lens, through the same pair of eyes. And June Jones' philosophy says, he says, when you can adjust routes, it doesn't matter what the defense does, because we always have an answer. Not by play call, but by play adjustment in real time. Their inside leverage break out, vice versa. It's a complicated system, but with the amount of reps he says they're able to get done on a day-by-day -day basis, when you talk to the players on this team, they love it. They feel like they can't be covered. It's a lot. It's a lot of trust on the players. That's what it is. And here, we'll see it on a third down. I would love to play in a system with that sort of freedom. I love the idea that there's no real set dip depths, there's no real set route hits. Run to where they're not. Run to where there's nobody in defense. Set down, be friendly to the quarterback, and don't fool them. That kind of fits really well with this June Jones system. I just, we never cross paths. Third down and two. Walker, pressure, standing in, and floats one. Smith's outstretched hand, and he delivers for 22 yards. That is so good. You see Holly here, a little off the right of your screen. He just runs a corner route, and Smith tries to undercut it. What a pass. P.J. Walker just puts just enough air on it. I mean, Smith has to say, what else can I do to cover that? It's good defense. That's just a big-time throw. Holly kept his angle nice and high. And Walker just dropped it in a bucket. That's just pretty. Here, a little quicker throw to Khalil Lewis. Gets a block from Mobley. And get inside the 25. 
talked earlier with Dallas, you know, those quick screens or an extension of the run. That's a perfect example. Dallas brought pressure off the edge. P.J. Walker understood the, the call in the, in the huddle was a run. We don't have enough guys to block them. So I have a built-in quick screen. But now it's, it's second and four. If you hand that ball off, it's second and ten. Those little nuances to this system allows them to stay ahead of the chains and prevent the plays. Here saying express. That means snap me the ball right now. Gets it right now. Delivers right now. And it's close to a first down. We'll see to Lewis. Looks like it's going to be a little short. Trips left, trips left up. 861 Kansas Special D's. Trips left up. 861 Kansas Special D's. So trips left up is the formation, which allows them to be in empty. You see there's nobody in the backfield other than P.J. Walker. 861 is the protection. Blitz coming on a third and one. Walker going for it all. And he gets it all. Touchdown, Blake Jackson. Well, you heard him say we don't miss that one. Well, they sure, they sure didn't. That was on time. Great job by Walker buying time. You see here, 17, Blake Jackson, he just runs a corner route. He's just going to take a high-angle corner route. He's got great leverage on the defender. P.J. Walker puts the ball out there enough that the safety just doesn't have enough time to come. It's just a really, really simple inside man runs the corner. The other two guys come across the field. He got great leverage, and P.J. Walker backpedaled, bought, bought some time, and threw the ball to the back corner of the end zone for a touchdown. I mean, it will go for three again. They converted this earlier, and Walker ran it in. Pressure again. Walker gets out of the tackle, looking to run, and this time he's not going to get out of the next tackle. James Fulston prevented the conversion, but still it's a 10-point lead. As Houston, for the first time today, goes the length of the field on an 84-yard scoring drive. That's the Houston offense we've seen this year throughout the season. It's good to see them kind of find their rhythm a little bit here in the third quarter. P.J. Walker doing some damage. Boy, is he ever. Just great touch on the football. His second touchdown pass of the day has the Roughnecks in front of the Renegades by 10. So we've got a 10-point lead. You know, we pointed out, here's, you know, here's Malone. He runs the corner route off this guy's leverage, right? You can see he's already inside. But the part that people don't see is here. You got Martini and Brown. They're coming unblocked. He's unblocked. But for some reason, he just stops rushing. Asante Brown has a clear shot at B.J. Walker. And for, I don't know if he got deked out with a pump fake or when P.J. Walker retreated, he just kind of froze and thought he'd knock the ball down. He's just got to sell out. He's unblocked. They're trying to run a 30-yard pass play. They were a little, you know, they were caught shorthand in the backfield, but that's that's got to be handled by the upfront guys. Very interesting. Got him the extra second, and he threw the touchdown. And right now, Jenny Taft is caught up with P.J. Walker. Well, B.J., you made it look easy with that 84-yard scoring drive, but I know the interception is uncharacteristic for you. And what you just told your guys, you're playing better, but you still want to improve this offense. What do you want to see? Uh, we just got to take what they give us. You know, we just got to continue to play fast, continue to be us. You know, we just, at times, we get out of characteristic and just do things that we ain't supposed to. We got to keep playing and just keep doing what we do. Feels like you're such a mobile guy, and you lower that shoulder a bit there. Just, what is going on? I don't know. I'm just playing. I'm out here having fun. I'm just out here playing. You guys look like you're having fun, yeah. so just keep doing it. Absolutely, yeah. Rihanna, Rihanna, Rihanna. He's Rihanna, not supposed Rihanna, to run over Rihanna, people, Greg, but we loved it. Rihanna, Rihanna. <laughs> I know you did. Love it. Pretty good. And so here's Dallas. His offense has been stagnant in the third quarter, trying to get Dunbar in the run game going. Not much there. And so this is what Jenny was asking about, what we're talking about. Your quarterback is certainly elusive. He said, yeah, forget elusive. Just going to do this. Rihanna, 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 Rihanna. Rihanna. Hear Landry Jones say Rihanna now two plays in a row. Last time it was just a zone handoff to the right. Easy, easy. J-Lo, J-Lo. 
All right, Jalen. Jalen. Seems like now they're Jalen. checking it maybe left. Instead of zone right, there. zone left. Ready Is the next call A Rod? Yep, there you go. Maybe. There's Artis Payne. No. Nowhere to go. So Rihanna and J Lo haven't worked. Yeah, so What's what happens up is they come up and they have a two-way check. So Rihanna and J-Lo, they have their backs offset. So they're in a balanced formation. They can run the action either direction based off the front of the defense. So originally they had Rihanna, zone Roger, right. Roger, Roger. Then they just flip Roger, it. Roger. J-Lo's the counter to that. And they just run the same play to the left. But now again, Roger. they're in three possessions Hold in a row. They're in third and a mile. It's just not what this offense is built for. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, ho. Only one of seven on third down right today as it is. Ready, go ahead. Have to get to the 31. Jones has time. Parham is open. Parham racing across the middle. And there it is. He picks it up. Parham is open almost every play, you feel like. And there they get it to the big guy. And he delivers to move the chains for 19. I feel like a broken record. It's literally the exact same play again. He comes from offside here. Watch the mesh. Guy across. And like I said, if it's zone, he stops. If it's man, he continues to run a drag. They've run that play now four or five times. The only incomplete was the one he threw over his head. They're running it again. See if they keep they going to it. Again. I mean, why, why stop it if it's not going to be stopped, right? I mean, keep going to it. That's he right. picks up, what, seven more. It, I mean, they just, again, we talked earlier. It seems like how Mummy, that play sheet is small. He obviously feels good about the plays on it. And he says, until you stop it, I'm just going to continue to run it. I wouldn't be surprised if they do it again. Parham lined up in the slots. Ready, go ahead. Gave him eight, second two. Same play. Jones pumps, looking, going. Oh, he's got a man. Flynn Nagel makes the play inside the 30. A big play from Landry Jones to Flynn Nagel. They got 33 on the hookup. Maybe it's literally the same, same play. Every time, he's just going through his progression. Watch, this guy runs a drag, he runs this, and if they jump it, I'm gonna throw the post over the top. They're running the same concept. We saw him throw it. Now watch, they they drive Parham, he's caught the last couple times, and now they throw the post over the top. And they just did the same exact play again, but this time nobody's open. He's got it. Oh. Well, you're right, that was the same route, same route. They're, they're literally running the same play and just saying, hey, take your progression, start with the single side drag, work your way across Ralph, tight end to deep post. Ralph, Ralph. And they're finding a little something here. Ralph. Is that common? Will you, will you, will you, have you done that before where you just go back to the same play on a, on a yeah. drive like that? Yeah, and a lot of teams have just checks. They'll just say, you know, reload, reload, or whatever they, their call is. It just tells everyone, line up and do it again. Here they get a screen, they get some room. Dunbar, good cut. Lance Dunbar inside the 10. Oh, Lance Dunbar making it happen at a first and goal. We talked at the opening of the show, Lance Dunbar, he's tied with two other really dynamic receivers, one being Cam Phillips in the passing game with 20 receptions. You see him here in space on the screen. He's really elusive. We saw a couple plays earlier on the screen game with Cameron Artis Payne. This time it's Lance Dunbar. JJ Linda! JJ Linda! JJ Linda! First and goal from the four. JJ Linda. Those code words are always right, left, usually sets the protection. Jones firing, Nagel catching, is he in? They say he made the catch, but he's short of the goal line. Just one extra hitch. If he just pulls that trigger on that first hitch, the ball might be a little more on time. But that's still a really good throw and a great catch. We've seen that Flynn Nagel make a couple big catches. He was close to being out. He was bounce, really wasn't he? close. I mean, it was hard to see the, the foot with that shot. Really close. Uh, either way, second and goal. They're going to come near side. Dunbar, they ran that play earlier. And Dunbar's going to walk on in. Touchdown. You said, KB, we saw that exact same play earlier in the game on that critical fourth down conversion. We talked about it. They put Lance Dunbar off to one side, Cameron Artis Payne, and they used the zone left with the jet sweep action to Dunbar. Jeremiah Johnson was not happy, the corner of the Roughnecks. He thinks he was held, but they didn't call it. 
Really good answer there by Dallas. Great drive. They found some action with that one play. Kept running over and over. And then Dunbar finished it off. So interesting, Dallas will try for three here. And everyone's still trying to figure out what the right call is. If you, if you go for one, it's a field goal game. But they're going to go for three. Obviously, there's a lot more time left in this one in the third quarter. Three-point try. Jones hangs in, delivers. Oh, oh, what a beauty! The conversion is good. What a throw and what a catch. I mean, he literally can't be covered. Lewis can't have him covered any better. He throws the ball low inside and then Nagel as he did you know, three four times that possession alone just does a great job securing the catch what a huge answer after everything that's gone wrong KB they're down one point unbelievable 79 yard drive and then the three point conversion it's a one point game down to the field we go with Jenny well Lance how about that for you getting the touchdown you've been crucial in getting that run going all all game and this offense known to get things going in a second half how do you keep it just keep going, man. Keep executing. Taking it one play at a time. That guy did a great job executing. Wanted to make some big plays, and, you know, it feels good to do that. I got to ask you about the celebration from Flynn there, because I felt like everyone was celebrating along with that guy. How good does that feel? I feel great, man. You see, you see some team provider. You know, he's been, he been practicing that for some, for some time now. You get to see him uh, get that extra point. Practice makes perfect. Thanks for your time. Jenny, thank you. We got a game. It's a one-point game, and this crowd is into it. People on their feet here at Arlington. This is kind of the matchup we thought between the 3-0 Roughnecks and the 2-1 and Renegades. And now, as each team has gone down, <laughs> look at those get-ups. Each team going the length of the field, matching touchdowns back to P.J. Walker. I think this is the game here. These last couple possessions, this was the game I think everyone across the league fans. I know we talked about it all week. This was the game we all hoped to see. Two high-powered offenses, passing attacks, going up and down the field, answering each other with touchdown drives. Let's see if Houston can now answer back, but we've got ourselves a game now, and this is pretty exciting. Final 29 seconds of the third quarter. Walker will pull it and throw it, and holding on is Holly. Couple of bobbles, he makes the catch. And he's got a 16-yard game. That's just base RPO all day. It's a run play. That backside backer pulls the trigger on the run. He pulls it. Holly, like you said, he, he caught that ball about three times. All right. But he ended up with it, which is, which is all that matters. And it looks like they will watch this quarter run out. So it is a throwdown in Texas. After all, Greg, I know you were concerned. It is living up to the billing. This is great. Trading some barbs here in Arlington. It's a one-point lead. Roughnecks over the Renegades. We start the fourth quarter in Arlington. What a great one this has been. Back and forth battle. Houston took an early big lead. Dallas clawed their way back. And then trading long touchdown drives. We start the fourth quarter. It's a one-point game. Houston, here's the quarterback comparison. Landry Jones, three interceptions in the first quarter. But he's come back to have a pretty decent day. P.J. Walker, only a second interception of the year. He's got two touchdowns as well. And this is coming down to the final 15 minutes along with Jenny Taft and Greg Olson, our entire XFL FS1 crew. I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Glad to have you along. And Houston with the lead and the football with a first and 10 from their own 37. As Walker gets rid of it quickly and it's incomplete. So Cam Phillips, the leading receiver in the XFL, he's had back-to-back -back weeks of three-plus touchdowns. He's only got one catch for nine yards today. Yeah, and I think it has a little bit to do with what Dallas is doing on defense. They're changing some of their coverage. You know, Josh Hawkins is a guy they feel strongly about, but they're doing some zone stuff, playing over the top. We heard June Jones say, hey, when he gets over, we'll throw it to him. I think sometimes, though, as a play caller, you got to find a way to get your best player involved in the game. 
through some game plans, some quick throws. Here's a quick throw to Coates on the other side. And bring him third down. Yeah, it just doesn't look like Walker's looking his way very much. See if June Jones finds a way to get him involved. Get his energy back. Let's go trade left. So you're going to the short side of the field. Trade left. And I got QB Tampa. QB Tampa. And I got uh, Sacramento over here. Sacramento. Trips left. Trade left. Trade left. Sacramento over here. QB Tampa. Walker on a high snap in trouble immediately. And down he goes. He had no chance. Dallas all over with tremendous pressure. And the Renegades defense gets a hold. Great stop. You see Walker's getting a little frustrated. He's kind of drawing back and forth. This Dallas D-line has really, really stepped up here in the second half. You heard the call. QB Tampa is a designed run here to the right. And if he doesn't like the numbers, Sacramento was the four receivers into the boundary. You heard June Jones talk about it. He can just alert that and throw it out for a quick screen. He must have liked the box count and thought he had a chance, but they weren't having it. Nope, turned into disaster. They weren't having it. Great play there. Great stop by Dallas now. Put their, put their offense back on the field. Renegades have two punt returners here for the first time today. Short kick again. Nagel says let it bounce if it goes out of bounds. They get it at the 35, but instead it was a terrible decision because it ends up down at the 10. Wow. Yeah, you put two guys back there because you don't want it to touch the ground. So I'm not quite sure why, when you only have half the field, why he wouldn't just run up and save 15 yards and just fair catch the ball. But he's done a lot of other things right, so we're going to give him a little bit of a break. Yeah, that cost him 20 yards, though. Here's a summary of the game for you. I mean, a lot of things even in this one. The turnovers spurred Houston early. The Dallas D really kept him in the game. So now their turn, trailing by one. Andrew Jones, 5 of 6, 82 yards on the last drive, his best of the day. Pretty good. First down on the give. And it's hard as pain. Now you're talking about Nagel on that decision, Greg, and obviously he's had a big day. He had that three-point conversion catch. He's got four catches, 56 yards. It's amazing on him. Talk about reliability. Throwing it to him 19 times this year. He's caught 17 yes, balls. I mean, the efficiency of those numbers is just through the roof. If I'm Landry Jones, and I'm looking to get completions, <laughs> I'm going to keep throwing it to him until he proves otherwise. Looking that way initially, now no one's open. Now he goes back there, and there is Nagel. Like you said, keep throwing it to him, and he delivers again. He's got a first down. I know this sounds silly, KB, and I almost hesitate to keep saying it over and over again. But watch, they're running these same drags, and Nagel, he's just reading reacting. Run, run, run. So he's running the post. He sees his quarterback scramble, and he's just breaking his route off. They're running the underneath concept of this mesh watch drag the concept. They run it six times in a row. Pretty good. And by the way, it's working. Seven. Jones goes down, though. Try to a ball. to go with the ball you can just see from this angle the pocket just really collapses on him they, don't, they run a little te stunt great job there great rush edmund robinson he gets the trifecta he gets the sack the force fumble and the touchdown that's pretty good that's a dream scenario all, all for three is hard to come by right that's a dream scenario for a defensive line like you said they came in leading the lead Sacks with 10. They didn't have any, they didn't have any sacks up to that point. We need all that. Right at the perfect time. So the fourth turnover by Landry Jones. Houston has scored 21 points off those turnovers so far. Obviously a chance to do it here. They're gonna go for two. Walker, and that's tipped away at the last screw. I think that was Alexander again. That's his third today. So, 
Big defensive play. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. And this team has had so many of those big plays all day on defense. Edmund, just for you, you come in, this team leading the league in sacks. How good did it feel for that sack fumble? Yeah, so I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, what I can tell you is they were excited about it. Jenny, how dare Edmund not give you the proper time? Like, he acts like he's got to go play special teams or something. Unbelievable. The nerve. Got one more XFL game to close out the weekend after us. It's over on ESPN2. Cardell Jones and the Defenders taking on the Tampa Bay Vipers. 7 Eastern D.C. coming off a rough one in L.A. See if they could uh, rebound in Tampa Bay. That's coming up next to close out the weekend. Great game here this afternoon, though. Houston took a big lead. Dallas has come back, and it's been back and forth since. But the Roughnecks with the defensive touchdown, uh, the strip sack and return by Edmund Robinson. Now the kick is bobbled. And picked up. Dunbar is in trouble, and down he goes before the 15. The importance of this game in the early going. Remember, it's only a 10-game season, so every game pretty important. And Houston has been perfect so far. Certainly, they've been tested. Dallas, 2-0 since Landry Jones came back from injury. He missed the first game in that West Division. Seattle struggling, L.A. struggling, so give you a little taste. And meanwhile, in the other division, St. Louis looks like... They could be arguably the best team in the league as well. They're only lost to Houston in a game we did, Greg. So here comes Dallas. Down by a score. And nobody home. Artis Payne on the screen. Base, base. Base, base. Yes. What's coming? Jones and the receiver did not turn around. The debt was blocking. That was bizarre. Yeah, so I think what happened there, Landry Jones, the original play, the debt was coming out to, to block. And I think Landry Jones gave him a signal that he didn't see because shortly after the ball hit him in the back of the head he turned around and Landry Jones kind of tapped his hip like hey keep your eyes on me I'm giving you a signal you had off coverage I just want you to run a hitch mm. but obviously Bidette didn't see it now they find themselves in third and long another blitz coming Jones in trouble and stays alive momentarily now gets rid of it somehow Artis Payne though nowhere to go it was a pretty miraculous effort just to get rid of the ball, but still ends up being a fourth down and long in a punting situation. I mean, Houston, everyone talks about their offense, and deservingly so. But I'll tell you what, when this game got tight, the Houston defense really has taken over. The strip sack uh, touchdown in the previous possession, and now here, a great three and out. Almost back-to-back -back third down sacks, but great job by this Houston, def this Houston defense kind of holding up their end of the bargain to go along with that high-powered offense. It's been their MO. They've made big plays all year so far. That's a high, booming punt. And for some reason, lets it hit the ground. Malone does, and it takes a nice Dallas roll. Wednesday night on FS1, a really good college basketball game. Miles Powell at number 13, Seton Hall. They got a big win over Marquette yesterday. Looking to take another step toward the Big East regular season title. It's been a while for them. They'll take on number 12, Villanova, 8.30 Eastern. Also on the Fox Sports app. app. That's a heck of a game. Seton Hall is having a dream season. Just kind of feels like maybe it's, it's their year. And Powell is, if not the best player in the country, certainly one of them. So that'll be fun. I remember as a kid going to the Continental Airlines Arena there by Giant Stadium to oh, watch yeah. to watch Seton Hall. They, they weren't 13th in the country, though. No. But uh, they had some good runs. Was that, uh, that was, you were probably a little later than the Terry DeHair or Jerry Walker crew. Yeah, that was like the Danny Hurleys in them, right? Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, Danny Hurley. and go. Yeah, they, they had a good little run there for a while. They weren't 13th in the country. No, this is quite a run. Meanwhile, here are the Roughnecks. They're on a pretty good run, too. Undefeated so far. Hits the Butler. 
He's been kind of a non-factor today, and he'll go through that because this is a throwing team, but quiet day for Butler. It has, and like you said, that's probably not a huge surprise. I think his production week in and week out is going to be kind of up and down just based off this pass first. We're going to we're going to pass the ball to set up the run. That's June Jones's long-standing philosophy, and if you're a running back, you just have to kind of understand hey, the situation that you're in. Let's go. Talked about Cam Phillips. There he is at the bottom of your screen. Walker looking the other way. Gets hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. I'm not sure what's made Walker do so. You know, Cam Phillips is always going to line up on the right side. That's just kind of a staple of this offense. His eyes on almost every play. You see him here. He's looking left all the way. He had Cam Phillips there. Quick throw, quick slant. Pretty much uncovered. I I don't know if it's by design. I don't know if they, Walker just feels more comfortable right now working the left side, but now would be a time to try to get Cam Phillips into the game because, like you said, he's only got one catch. Three targets. Walker in triple and sacked. He had no chance of safety blitz from Micah Abernathy. You know, we've talked about Walker understanding where he's protected, where he's not protected. You see Abernathy right here. You don't have anybody to account for him. Walker tries to put his foot in the ground and escape. He kind of slipped a little bit. But now that's a DB coming at him. We saw earlier in the, in the game, you know, making linebackers and such miss. But it's a DB, kind of a slot corner coming off the edge, unaccounted for in their protection scheme. And a really timely sack. Great call there. A great the opportunity defense. for the Renegades to set up a return. Again, they get two back. This is a booming punt. Wow. Dunbar way retreating back to the 20. Looks to flip it to Nagel. He'll keep it. And he's going to pay for it. Probably should have flipped it. It looked like he was going to lateral it, didn't totally. it? So, 8.04 to go. After a 58-yard punt, it's Landry Jones trying to lead a comeback. His team down by seven. No. Hey, when you try somebody like that, this is the result you get. Yes, yes. That's the way to go, buddy. Yeah, good job. Hey, ain't saying all day, baby. Well, hey, we don't mess with Dallas out here. Ain't saying all day. What a game, Squid! Let's go! Sounds of the game, and it's been a good game. It's a seven-point roughneck lead. Renegades football, plenty of time, 8.04 to go. Renegades field position has been brutal. 21, 11, 14, and 21, their last four possessions. Here's Landry Jones sliding with time, delivers a good ball and a completion. That's Badet who's got it for a first down. Great timing, but Landry Jones kind of stuck with him. You see Fidette here. He just runs what they call a comeback. He's going to press the leverage of the corner. He's going to come downhill to the sideline. He almost stepped out of bounds because the throw was late, but Landry Jones was able to kind of reset his platform. Just get that ball on target. Well, I think Lewis got a finger I on it, too. I think so, too. He had enough juice tight, but... to get it through. The end result was what they were looking for. Sure was. Jones on the rollout. Pressure coming. Throws on the run. Getting, trying to get his tight end Parham involved. And it's a catch. Big 6'8". Parham went down and got it. It's a heck of a job for nine yards. Let's see. I couldn't tell. The official kind of was in the way. It looked like it hit his hands clean. Ball did hit the ground, but if he has possession it's of it. It's not a charge timeout. Yep. Really on the field of a catch is under further review. So they're going to look at that. Again, there's no coaches' reviews in this league. Let's see if this angle, if the yeah. not gets shielded by the officials. So let's see, hands. So the ball can hit the ground as long as it's possessed and doesn't come Boy, that's really, you know, it's tough because it's really hard to see. I think I, if I, they called it a catch on the field. Right. Again, everyone at home is saying it's hitting the ground, but does the ball move and become dislodged? 
Brandon, we're good What's with the catch in? on the field. You're going to stand with the we're, ball. We're, yeah, the ruling on the field stands. His, he has hands on it. It looks like the ball may even touch the ground, but he does have firm grasp and control. So he controlled the ball before? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to yeah, stand. He, he controlled the pass. But just say stands. Thank you. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field of a catch stands as called. It's second down. Uh, I think you hit it, Greg. And I also think if it was ruled incomplete, it would have stayed that way, too. I think so, too. I just think... You know, everyone at home gets caught up with the ball hitting the ground. But it really doesn't matter. And you heard the replay official tell the head ref on the field. It was in his hands, even though it hit the ground. It never really moved. He had clean possession of it. And again, like to your point, it was called a catch on the field. They said stands. It's a great catch, though, by Parham. Sure Moore. is. Six for 56 on a touchdown for him. Jones in trouble. Knocked away. Tried to get it to Artis Payne. But Beniquez Brown with a defensive play, and so it'll be a third and one. Yeah, I think Dallas here has to approach this that we got two downs. You see him bringing Dunbar. Is he taking? All right, so they're going to go to two running backs here. So they're going to go a little different third down here. They're going to put Dunbar in the slot. They took Nagel out. They've been very successful in this kind of two back personnel package especially on short yard situations do they do another jet motion here looks like he's killing the play nope artist pain powers his way for a first down man that wasn't easy give credit to artist pain who made it happen i think originally it was going to be that jet play again kb and then i think he saw that there was an unblocked defender on the edge you saw him turn away kind of swipe see these guys here he doesn't want to run the jet into them because they're going to obviously knock his head off. So he kills it. You see him kind of brushing his belly to check the play, and he's just going to hand the ball off to Artis Payne. That's a good job there by Landry Jones getting him out of a bad play. And it works. Blitz again. Jones incomplete. Held it as long as he could. Try to get it to Artis Payne. Second down. Open 6-H shallow. Open 6-H shallow. You know, we've kind of talked that nauseam about they're running the same play, and we're kind of joking. That's just a really across there, Flynn. basic staple of this air raid system. You know, anybody who's left running, Mike Leach, Kingsbury, you know, all these guys, there's going to be drags and shallow crosses. You see him doing it again. Nagel, who's been a beast today, close to a first down. That time they blitzed two. It's just a huge, made him pay. it's a huge part of this offense, right? I mean, it seems so basic, and you know, it seems like they're doing the same thing, but they are. And you know, you, you tune in, Kyler Murray's on the sideline. I'm sure he recognizes a lot of these plays with Cliff Kingsbury, kind of a disciple of this air raid system, now bringing it to the NFL again. It's a very effective offense when you have the right personnel and the right signal caller. Third down and one. Showing blitz again. They come with it yet again. Jones sees it, delivers, incomplete. He tried to get it to Parham. Gates may have gotten a hand on it. It's a fourth and one. You know, that's one of those plays. Last week we saw a very similar route, and it's he catches that. The defender tries to undercut it. The big 6'8 tight end reaches out, catches it, and goes 80 yards for a touchdown. Gates, a little taller, a little bigger body, just high enough to kind of get his hands and deflect it. This is... All right, so we got Dunbar again in the slot. Here's Dunbar. He's looking in. Does he like it? He's checking. He's going to sneak it and get it. Another great job by Landry. I think he's hurt. Oh, no. oh his knee. Oh, no. That's his knee. Oh, no. Landry Jones suffered a knee injury the first day of practice for the XFL. You see, he's wearing that brace, and he's been getting back into it. And he even told us the other day, you know, still kind of ticking the rust off. Oh, just, just brings terrible. back a lot of memories watching Patrick Mahomes run a quarterback sneak this past season. Kind of a similar play, quarterback sneak, short yardage. Just a lot of bodies getting rolled up. And Mahomes was able to come back. You gotta hope that, you know, it's hard to compare injuries, but 
Kid was just starting to kind of get his legs under him. He's being he helped great, to his feet. That's does a great job again. He's really favoring that knee. Oh man. He does everything right. You see him looking at Dunbar, letting him know whether he's going to bring him or not. <sighs> he sees the opening. Let's see what happens. It's his left knee. See big 91. The Shawd Lions kind of take him up high. It's just in a pile. Yeah. I have a feeling it's coming up right yeah, there gosh. it was at the end. Oh, you can only hope, you know, again, he injured it the first day of practice. He'd been out for, what, four to six weeks. You can only hope it's a tweak and nothing major. Right. Meanwhile, they have to move forward. Philip Nelson, who started week one for Jones in that Play game, 33 of 42, hey. 209 yards. One day. Here right. it is with the spotlight. His team down by seven. Nelson loads up, going to fire. Incomplete. Came to their side to Bedette. Nelson has started his college career at Minnesota and then transferred to East Carolina. Played in the AAF last year. It's the 10th play of this drive as Dallas has to piece it together without their leader, Landry Jones. Here we go. Hey, Glenn. Nelson has it blocked up. Nelson going deep. There's a flag. It's going to be pass interference. The deck got held up with the ball in the air. Jane A. Harris was the man on the coverage. So on the previous play, they ran the exact same thing, and they tried to run Bidette on a little comeback, and Harris really drove it. What's how Mummy do? Doesn't double move off the same action, same stem by the receiver, and Harris knows he's beat. He's got no choice but to commit the P.I. It doesn't always have to be complicated, KB. You see something on the play before, show him the exact same look and take advantage of the defender's aggressiveness. That's exactly what Hal Mummy did there. Same action by the quarterback, same initial route by Bidette. Then he just puts the double move on him. Meanwhile, it's been a good drive, 49 yards already. Nelson over the middle, knocked away. That time Harris gets his revenge. Nice play. Does a great job there. You'd like to see the receiver just be a little flatter. You see he runs that shallow cross, and he's fading away from the ball. See him? It allows Harris to undercut flat. The Dets got to pick his line, and if anything, you want to actually run downhill. We heard June Jones talk about it and run at least parallel, if not slightly back to the quarterback, keep the defender from being able to come underneath and undercut the ball. Second down. Nelson stands in, throws. He's got a completion. It's Martino. His first catch of the day results in a first down. Great job by Martino there again. Just a simple drive route, but look how deep Harris is. He's got a lot of room to try to go. He's got to fight through the big body of the tight end on the crossing deep post. When you're that off coverage, it's hard to rally like he did on the previous play. Hey, easy, easy, easy. Hey, dog Linda, dog Linda, dog Linda. Hey, dog Linda, dog Linda. Monday. Here you go, here you go. Another blitz. Got a free play. Nelson sees it, launches it incomplete, but there are flags everywhere. And then another one, and that may be on the hit. So I think that they jumped on the free play, and I think there's a late hit. I think they're going to have two penalties here, both on the defense. In 98. Oh, there you go, Matt. You got, you got DOF on what number? 98. I got roughing the passer on 98, so we're going to go. What was the result of the play? Is that, whose flag is that, yours? Okay, so we're gonna go half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. There are two, two fouls, fouls on the play, play by the defense. defense. Offside, number 98, that penalty is declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 98 for the contract for the quarterback's helmet. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Tough play, the tough play there by 98. Yeah, he just hits Nelson with a left hook square in the jaw. Jumped off sides. And then, yeah, I mean, that's clean. They're going to protect the quarterback all day. Tough play there, but. Hey, okay, six, hey. Easy hey, call. Don't, don't run, you're, don't run. 
this trouble to, continues. They were able to kind of stand strong last week in a very similar situation at the end of that Tampa game. Can they do it again? First and goal. Nelson thinks about running, takes off. Nelson sliding down at about the three. Tell you what, KB, Nelson's got a great command here. He has a chance to throw this ball to Cameron Artis Payne on the check down, but he says, forget that. I'm going to go and I'm going to slide inside the five. I like the way he's come into this game. He's got a good way about him. He seems confident. He's done a nice job filling in for Landry Jones when the game's on the line. Well, well, well. The game is on the line. We've hit the two-minute warning. Dallas looking for the tying score. Knocking on the door. <laughs> you just feel for Landry Jones. Came out of retirement to be the leader of this team. Knee injury for his practice. And, and he looked like he got hurt pretty good. And you see the emotions for Landry. And so he's on the sideline out for the game, obviously. And Philip Nelson has come in and just been great on this drive. 12 plays already, 75 yards. It's a first and goal on the three. Dallas is down by seven, two minutes to go. And don't forget about the 6'8 tight end down here. Parham is on the right of your screen, number 49. Kind of interesting, first time all day. They got a tight end and a three-point stance. Instead, they get it to Nagel, and that play is not going to go anywhere. As a matter of fact, it's picked off. What? Oh, my God. It never hit the ground. And Gates has it for Houston. Oh, my gosh. That's absolutely heartbreaking. But they can't quit. They got a minute 57. Balls on the minus five. That was an incredible play. What a play. This defense, though, they need to come out and rally. They've got to hold Houston where they are, and they're going to get another crack at this thing. Look at the ball, one-handed. What a, oh my gosh. Good things happen when you run to the ball, KB. They work on it. Just bobbles it. Gates, what a he's their leader. We talked about him to start the show. Look at P.J. Walker, you know, he's thrilled. But now he's got his work cut out for him. The ball's on the minus two. Backed up. These Houston Roughnecks are turnover machines. They came in at a plus five. They got five yeah. takeaways today, 11 on the year. It's the story of their year. But like you said, a lot more time left in this comeback here. The clock stops after everything. Now, don't be surprised to see a long shot here. June Jones, he's not afraid to throw the ball down the field. Walker in trouble. Gets they were trying. The zone. They were. All three receivers ran about 35 yards down the field. Walker wanted to throw that ball over the top. Just didn't quite have enough time or didn't quite have the right look. But June Jones is not scared to this air that ball out from his own end zone. So Dallas takes a timeout. So he's team with one timeout left. And again, remember the timing if you're new to the XFL. After every single play inside two minutes, the clock will stop. And it'll only begin running after five seconds run off the play clock. So you got to spot the ball. And bottom line is you got plenty of time to set up and run the next play without any time running off. they got plenty of time here. If you're at Dallas, you can stop the clock one more time. Plus, like you said, the timing rules. If you can hold them three and out here, you're going to get the ball with plenty of time to go down and have another shot to tie this game or take the lead. Feel for Landry Jones there, boy, that's just tough. It's heartbreaking. Meanwhile, second and six, 151 to go for Houston. And the run, that is not going to get it done. Maybe a yard. And now will Dallas decide to call their last timeout? They will. Second final timeout of the half by Dallas. 30 seconds in length. So we said this is the beginning, Greg. Dallas has been great in so many categories this year, but they've been horrendous in turning the ball over, and today has been the same exact story. Yeah, and it's a mixture of bad decisions. It's a mixture of receivers and quarterback being on different, kind of different pages. That last one was just a straight drop. So everyone kind of has their hand in that, but... You know, they came into the lead, they came into the game, you know, Houston with a plus five turnover differential, and now they're at nine. You know, they got four more, to five more turnovers today. Obviously, Walker threw the one pick, but 
It's really been the story of these two teams. Very similar in a lot of the statistics, but Houston's done a great job forcing turnovers and protecting the ball, and Dallas has been the complete polar opposite, and that's got to be very frustrating for Bob Stoops and his staff. For as good as this Houston offense is, really all year they've been set up by the big plays from their defense, and speaking of big plays, you got one here. Third down and five. Do they bring pressure? Yeah. Looks like they're bringing pressure here. They are. Walker sees it, gets rid of it, completes it. Looks to be a first down as Walker hangs in and delivers to Malone. What a great job by Walker. He sees the pressure here coming off the edge. And watch him just drift away, drift away. And he delivers an absolute strike to Malone on the speed out. It's just big time ball. Mm. He gets the ball. Look at it. Hey. Oh. Brown tries to drop underneath it. And he just hurry, can't hurry. quite get enough. He puts a great pace on that. On the handoff. As the time is winding down. And so it's getting perilously close for Houston. One more first down. They'd be able to do it again. It's a little different with these timing rules. NFL, you got no timeouts. You're inside two minutes. Game's over here. You really got to get it inside a minute to have a chance to really end the game. So Dallas, desperation on these last two downs. Yeah, I think they got to just sell out. I think they got to hope for a tackle for loss, some sort of fumbled exchange. I think they got to really just bring something here and hope for disruption because uh, you see them now, they're bringing that same pressure again off this side. They will run it, and it'll be a third down. Yep. Here, June Jones. Is he going to be super aggressive here or just try to run some clock? Let's go. Trips right. Trips right. Use all the clock. Trips right. And I got half 51 Z go. Trips right, half 51 Z go. He's going deep, isn't he? I think he's going deep. I think he's going deep to Cam Phillips. We haven't called his name. Look, he just said you got bump and run on the Z. I think he's throwing the ball right here to his best player and saying. Go make a play. Let's see if he does. Looking that way, goes oh. underneath. Malone bumps off a tackle, but he's short of a first down, I think. Let's see where the spot is. He got a good spot. I think he got it. He's got it. I thought initially he was short. That spot moves in. Looks like he's got yeah. the first down he does. That's the game. Yeah. Cam Phillips ran a fade. He just liked the easy throw better. I thought for sure we were going to take a shot. I think June Jones thought he was going to take a shot. But he really developed a nice kind of rapport there at the end of the game with Raheem Malone. And his run after catch and extra effort converted the first down. The Houston Roughnecks in this Texas showdown are going to stay on top. They will remain unbeaten, the league's only unbeaten team, and move to 4 and 0. And for the Renegades of Dallas, a hard-fought game, but turnovers plagued them again, and heartbreak is an injury to their quarterback, Landry Jones, and the emotions on their leader. Roughnecks will get the win, 27-20. to 20. More big plays from Houston's defense. Jenny Taft is with one of the heroes. It was all about the defense today, Kevin DeMarcus. Really for you, game-clinching interception, but five takeaways for this group. What can you say about the performance you saw from your guys? Man, I love it, man. I love these guys. They're fast, physical. You know, we just stay at it. Had to play all four quarters, and you know, came out with this W. It was a quote from you earlier this week that the offense might win you games, but defense will wins you championships. This team, you're undefeated right now. How do you continue to carry this momentum as really the team to beat in this league? Uh, most definitely. You know, we just got to keep on working. You know, keep working hard. Keep playing you know, ourselves and our teammates first and you know, come out here and just compete. Uh, you know, we do a great job in practice, you know, learning our game plans. We uh, just got to come out here and execute like we did today. And you won this one, the Texas Throwdown. Go enjoy it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks. Jenny, thanks. How about DeMarcus Gates? Two weeks in a row, a game-sealing interception on defense. Did it against Tampa Bay last week. That's uh, that's the way to go. And so the standings, Houston at 4-0. Renegades fall to 2-2. Two and two. In the East, the Battle Hawks, they're only lost to Houston. They're looking real good. Greg, we'll have them next week in D.C. Looking forward to that one. I tell you, Houston, just big plays, not only on offense, but on defense. Yeah, their defense stepped up when they need to. And, and like we said, the entire broadcast, turnovers, takeaways. Houston's defense, they, they haven't always, you know, been great in the stat sheet, but they are opportunistic, and we saw that today. Five takeaways. 
And uh, that's really been their recipe. That's been their formula the entire season. Their formula is working for another win, 27 to 20, and a good one from Arlington today. Fox bad boy. Looked like looked like we were going to get the over, but uh, the scoring quieted down at the end, at the doorstep actually, with the interception, and that meant that the under hit Houston covers. They were the favorites, and they end up winning by seven, two and a half point favorites coming in. Our producer this afternoon, Bo Garrett, our director Mitch Reagan. Been a fun one. As a Roughnecks boy, they are tough to beat, and they do it again against their rivals here in Arlington. For Jenny Taft and Greg Olson, the rest of our XFL on FS1 crew, I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Five turnovers, including an interception late, more P.J. Walker touchdowns and magic, and Houston, the lone undefeated team in the XFL. We'll see you next week in D.C.